Yo! What's going on? Right on time! Not really, but, you know, we can pretend. We can... imagine. Welcome, friends. Curious. Let's go. Let's do this. It's Guild Wars 2 time, guys. We're here in uh, Guild Wars 3 territory. You know, we're in the, in the mix for that, guys. I'm gonna gather up some of my wizard coins. Good shower? Definitely, yeah. Feeling fresh, got up. Had a full, um, you know, late night of vanilla WoW pre-questing with Frosty, you know. Thing ready to go right now, ready to pump. I'm about to take this keep, it's gonna be good. But yeah, we're here. We have arrived, my friends. We have arrived. Are we raiding on Monday or Tuesday, by the way, Angels? Uh, what's going on with that? Do we have a decision on that? What's uh, what's going on? What is the situation? Not confirmed? Yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Playing New World all night? Yeah, Tuesday might not be ideal, actually, because um, it's possible they change... They mess around with Saros on Tuesday. So I might put myself down as Monday only. That might be what happens. Yes. Let's get in there. 2pm UK Blast. Yeah, I'll be here. I will be here. Only uh, re-clear though. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. We shall see what we can do. We can maybe do some rage practice. But we don't have X, right? Like he's not back until Monday. So it's not ideal. Is this Guild Wars 3? This is not Guild Wars 3. This is still Guild Wars 2. Don't worry about that, guys. It's, uh, if this was, if this would be, imagine if that was actually the, uh, the joke. You know, Guild Wars 2 is in fact Guild Wars 3. It's been hiding here in plain sight. We just haven't noticed. The game has been slowly, um, you know, slowly changing over time to the point where we haven't noticed that it's a completely different game now. It's possible. Hello, is this Guild Wars 3? Guild Wars 3 release is this coming Monday. That is actually a very, uh, that, is, that is quite funny, I'm not gonna lie. It's a good prank right there. Blurb boing. Just like WoW is WoW 3. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. The game is just consistently changing into the next version of itself. Could be the case. Also, Snab is in the chat. There's my Guild Wars 3 referral link. I mean, look, you know, that's going to kick in when they actually, I guess, start selling the game, I suppose. Yeah. Guild Wars 3, Return 2. Guild Wars 3 looks spectacular. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, we haven't even seen it yet, but already looking good. Actually, you know, we, we do need to talk about 
kind of some of the statements that were made actually by the companies because it's actually a little bit conflicting, right? So in the original message, the you know it was said, ah yeah, they're already working on Guild Wars Three. That it seems to be a little bit more ambiguous what the exact situation is right now because I believe NC has now come out and said, well actually it's more like it's been greenlit for development. Not that it's necessarily been started upon. And ArenaNet has basically said, we're still entirely focused on Guild Wars 2. Like, that's our main focus. Like, we're not necessarily focused on something else. So, honestly, nobody has any idea what's going on. Um, I don't think it's very clear whatsoever, uh, the situation. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's mostly just corporate stuff, right? Like, it's... I think all of the messaging right now is heavily corporate. And it, it's all, you know... I don't think any of it is particularly useful or meaningful. Um, they show off a trailer some years from now. The jaws drop. Excited about the concept of it. Yeah, I mean, it is funny that we've had we have such a a long wind up to this, right? Like, you know, we're not going to see anything even remotely resembling a game for years, which is quite funny actually. Uh, NC self statement is probably um, uh, closer to the truth. I mean, it's it's yeah, difficult to say, but yeah, it's it's very conflicting. There's, like, there's some slightly conflicting statements going about right now. I have uh, just Signet up on Amazon Prime. I got the seven-day free trial. Anyone know if that is the reason why I can't sub with Prime yet? Um, it, yeah, sometimes it might take a while to kick in. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure uh, exactly what's going on there. The only reason I've never played or tried Guild Wars 2 is the graphics put me off. I only heard great things of the comments in the game in general. Maybe Guild Wars might convince me it's graphically an update. I mean, yeah, it definitely will be. It's going to be in Unreal, so it should be quite pretty, I suppose. That should be uh, something that does happen with the game. Can Aina even admit it? It's true. For the future of Guild Wars, they would probably want some uh, cover-up anyway. I mean, it's not... I, I do. I definitely do think that this news puts ArenaNet in an incredibly awkward position. Um, because it, what, if they say something like, our main focus is Guild Wars 2, when it has been confirmed that Guild Wars 3 is kind of in the pipeline, uh, nobody's going to believe them. Uh, you know, which is, you know, that they're they're in a really awkward spot from a marketing perspective, to be honest. A really, really awkward um, position, I think. Uh, it's very annoying uh, for ArenaNet to navigate this particular scenario. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely not good news that information about Guild Wars 3 is out now. Uh, especially seeing as it's right before a Guild Wars 2 expansion. You know, the Guild Wars 2 expansion is, you know, I mean, look, we'll probably be hearing about the next Guild Wars 2 expansion in two months. Right, so this is really not the time uh, to be talking about Guild Wars 3 currently. Yeah. A plague sweeps the lands of Tyria, but the Tengu survive. Zombie looter shooter with gliding. I mean, yeah, I mean, it may be. I don't think so, though. We keep a lot of your cosmetics that will probably not kill Guild Wars 2 if Guild Wars 3 is announced. It, there, I think there's a lot of speculation around that. I feel like they can't do that. Um... Or I think that's very unlikely. One, that would be weird, right? Because you're kind of like locking in parts of the game. You're like shackled to Guild Wars 2 in some respect, which I feel like you really don't want in a new project. But also, this game's progression is that type of cosmetic stuff. Like, that's what the game is, basically. So if you take that away on launch, that's very weird. It's also a very weird look for prospective new players, I think. It's a bit of a weird meme. Um, heavily demoted for playing Guild Wars 2 the very idea. And was it silly as fuck? It's ultimately the trend with more and more over the years. For sure, yeah. I, 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 like, I, I think it is a bit weird to be demotivated by that. I mean, I, I guess I kind of understand where they're coming from, but... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Why play Guild Wars 2 when Guild Wars 3 is coming? Uh, I'll just, uh, wait for that. I mean, maybe new players might think that, but it's also, f like, five years away. So, it's, you know... <laughs> I mean, if you want to sit around and wait five years to play a video game, I mean, I guess it is what it is, but I don't know. Yeah. Good evening, Alka. Corpa. All right, then. In five years, we've got Living World, Season 1, 2, HOT, LO, uh, LS3, POF, LS4. Play a time left for Guild Wars 2. I mean, look, I don't know why people are... I don't know why people are talking about the fact um, that, you know, the, the, the game is going to die, right? Like, man, it's actually so funny, right? Like, everyone is just, like, immediately like, well, you know, it's over. It's been a good run, boys. 
We're shutting it down. The game is over. Guild Wars 2 is done. We had a good run, boys. I feel like that's the most unhinged. Yeah, evacuate. Everyone out. Everyone off, guys. Quick, abandon ship. Abandon ship. Get out. Get out. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, what Impulse is saying is true as well. Like, and I talked about this in my uh, in my video about this. There's no guarantee that the game is ever actually going to make it, right? Um, that you know, they might not even make the game. It's in like early development. It might get cancelled or turned into something else. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Guild Wars 2 won't die just like Guild Wars 1 did. I mean, Guild Wars 1 is definitely dead. Uh, just because it's, the servers are still running doesn't mean it's, a it's not a dead game. It definitely is a dead game. Uh, but the servers are still there. That is true. Chat, if everything is completely doomed, please press 1 in the chat now. Well, I mean, look, you know, there's a couple of 1s there. Development of Overwatch 1 was killed as well because the announcement of Overwatch 2. Well, I mean, with Overwatch 2, didn't they try and do that weird thing where it's kind of like... The games are connected in some sense, though. I understand why the games try and do that, but I don't know. It's a bit, a bit scuffed. Like, Path of Fire didn't... Uh, not, Path of Exile kind of ended up not doing that. Because they wanted the two games to be different. That's what Nike said, anyway. Guild Wars 1 is still a closed-off game, so you still play it. Um, and not feel lost. Yeah, that's actually the thing that really kind of keeps that game existing. Or, or makes that game playable. Is the fact that it is actually single playable. The devs were very clever on that. To make it so you could play with an entire party of heroes or mercenaries. That was a very intelligent decision. To kind of make the make the game playable. Even if there aren't that many human beings who play it. That was uh, clever. Are mini expansions actually the minimum viable product? Like, I, I actually really don't like this framing. This is a very... It's not cynical. It's actually... What would I say? It's... It is an extremely uncharitable reading of the situation. Like, it's... It's... No, no it's more than that. No, that's... I'm being too nice there. It's malicious. Like... It's derisive. If you're going, oh yeah, look at what they're doing right now. It's the minimum viable product. Like, if you find yourself thinking that, you should uninstall the game. Because it's just, your your brain is poisoned, um, basically, right? Like, it, it's, you're, oh, yeah, you're assuming bad intention on the part of ArenaNet. And I think that at that point, you're lost, right? You, there's, you know, there, there's no hope for you. Yeah, that's the correct way of putting it. Like, if you're saying, oh yeah, look at them now, they're releasing the minimum viable product. Like, you are assuming malice on their part. You are assuming they are deliberately not making a good game. Uh, and, and that is a, I mean, I don't know, like you can't, you, you can't reason from that perspective, right? Like there's, there's, there's nothing that you can, possibly engage with if that if that's your idea that oh yeah arena is not even bothered to even make the best game they can then i don't know like there's yeah like it, it, you're basically saying that arena is the same as ea games and honestly if arena is the same as ea games then you should quit the game like everyone should quit the game because once e once a company like ea games uh has its tentacles all over your game then there's no point in playing it anymore Um, yeah, the other thing is, of course, minimum viable product, funnily enough, actually is a term that has real applicability, but it's not a bad thing. Like, minimum viable product is like, um, what you would use as a demo to show to potential investors, right? Or to players, prospective players, right? Like, it's actually a very positive thing. It's very much like something that you would use to promote and ground your game. It's not this idea that, oh yeah, we're going to make the absolute bare minimum game that we can still make money off, right? Uh, no, I, I, I just really don't like that interpretation of, of kind of the intent of the company. It's just, I, I think it's a waste of time. Like, engaging with opinions like that is a waste of time. Yeah. Didn't they all keep the same sort of class names in Guild Wars 3? Uh, Probably, yeah. Something along those lines. Yo, 0N123. That's the tier one. I appreciate it. Um, Guild Wars 2 might get some of its best patches in order to hype people. I mean, I think that is cope. Um, I think that Guild Wars 3 development, if it continues, um, it does mean that we are basically going to be getting Soto for the rest of time. Uh, which, you know, is, is not necessarily a bad thing, but I think that does set the expectation a little bit. Like, you should expect every Guild Wars 2 expansion to be of a similar scale 
as what we got with Soto, which definitely is a little bit content light. You know, I, I do want to do a bit of a, a Guild Wars 2 Soto review. And I think I will say that the content is extremely light. I don't know about you guys, but um, playing through the story, you really notice, wow, the story is very short, isn't it? It's like 45 minutes to play through the entire thing. And a lot of that is just filler as well, let's be honest, right? They pad it out with like complete five events, do the meta event, right? They, they definitely pad it pretty hard. Um, I don't really, I don't hate the fact that the story involves doing events, actually. That's not something I'm inherently object, uh, like I inherently object to, but it certainly is very, very light on content uh, compared to what we've kind of experienced before, right? They are divesting all resources. They have a different project. And Guild Mini Extension would be bite-sized content forevermore. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I think that's a reasonable expectation to have. But that's not the... Again, like, I don't object to saying that. That statement is fine. I think that probably is the case. Um, but it's just the framing of it. Like, wh when you frame it as like, oh yeah, ArenaNet is making the minimum viable product. I think that's such a nasty way of putting it, right? Like, you're assigning... In I feel like you're, you're really packaging a lot of intent to the company. That they're like, oh yeah, fuck it. Like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just do this and we can still make money. I think that, that's, that's unfair. Yeah. Green bars are not content. I would actually fight a little bit on this. I, I don't hate the fact that the story wants you to go and do events in the open world, especially because the open world is supposed to be the story, right? Like, a, a lot of the story events happen both in story instances and in the open world. You can definitely see stuff like Dragon's End and just the meta events in general often tell the story um, simultaneously. I think that will be especially true with uh, Epoch as well, because Epoch is probably going to be a world boss uh, of some kind, or at least he'll be involved in some kind of world boss situation. Um, so, yeah, I think that's not necessarily true, but I do know what you mean. Yo, Vortus, tier one, tier billion sub. Um, minimum viable means making the game just good enough to build by the next phase. It's not bad, but it's also not great. Yeah, I, 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 that's what it is. But that's what I mean. I think that's intent. I don't, I don't like the um, assignment of intent there. Like, attached to that and the statement that you made there, Saraxa, to me, the way I, I read that, and I think this is how most people would read that, is that in some sense, a reader isn't trying, right? They're doing the minimum. Like, look, if I said, oh yeah, this guy's doing the bare minimum, or is doing the minimum at their job, or they're doing the minimum DPS needed, right? That's not exactly a positive light on that, yeah? I, I would say that's actually an extremely negative light on the actions of an individual. If you say someone, oh yeah, they're doing the absolute minimum, they're doing the bare minimum, um, that's, I think that's unfair. Minimum is good enough to pass. No, 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 I'm not, no, I'm talking, I'm not talking about a literal interpretation of this. Like, no, no, no. I'm not talking about literal, because human beings don't interpret language literally. That, that's not how that works. I'm talking about the framing, right? The framing around that statement. I'm not arguing the factual descriptor. I'm arguing the framing and the intent that is being ascribed to the company. Yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, this is the, the different, it's a very different thing here. Boom. Oh, that guy nearly died. Run! I thought we could, well, I feel like we could kind of fight this. We have some supports. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's my, that was my understanding of the term, Sneb. Is that like a minimum of our product is something that, you know, you've developed something. It's kind of, you can show it off to people, right? Like it's, it's in the place where you could actually go ahead and show it off to potential customers, potential clients. Uh, and, you know, then you can go from there. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. But I feel like the way it's being used here is heavily negative. Um, you know, and, and derisive regarding, like, again, the intentions of the company. Yes. Ah. For a long time, Gilwasu is not exceptional MMO. Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely had some rough patches. I think you're, you're not wrong there. And it can be trying hard to make a great game. Personally, I'm missing the innovation that Guild Wars 2 originally brought to the um, genre. I definitely think the time of innovation is over for Guild Wars 2, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. I think that's kind of a, a sad truth. Um, you're not wrong there. But I don't think it's because of... Um... Well, I have a really hard time, especially when I interact with devs in Guild Wars 2, 
thinking like they don't want to make the best game possible. And then they absolutely do. Um, like, are they going to take a lot of risks? Realistically, no. I think the g Look, the game is in an incredibly mature state. And when a game is in an incredibly mature state, you can't really afford to just be constantly taking risks all the time. It's not... A, it's just not a particularly sensible business model, I guess, uh, to keep doing that. So, like, yeah, uh, is ArenaNet going to do some kind of crazy innovation? I very much doubt that. I think it's extremely unlikely they they innovate a lot or change the game up in a in a significant way. Um, that is certainly the case. Is this guy going to go for the res? I think he actually might. Boom. That was fucking tanky. Holy shit. That was a 4k crit and he didn't die. I think he's dead now, though. Make money with very little investment and reinvest it in a new project. However, Guild Wars 3 means that this business with a large amount of asset reads and small amount of content is not going to change in the future. More they can make with the least amount of time, they have minimal viable product. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Okay, look, I'm just going to no bullshit. You know, honestly, if you feel that way, never interact with Guild Wars 2 ever again. Uh, and I'm not saying that because I want you to go away. I'm actually projecting what I would do. If I felt that way, if I felt that basically they are doing the absolute minimum, I would uninstall the game on the spot. Um, I would never play a game where I thought the devs basically don't give a shit, right? And they're, they're just serving up the minimum product they can that's still going to make people pay. I would uninstall on the spot, if that's the case. And that's a fair position to hold, by the way. I'm not trying to argue you out of the way that you feel about Guild Wars 2. I have no interest in doing that. But I'd encourage you to actually act on that. Instead of just hanging around uh, and just, like, basically just having... A very negative experience for no reason. Just disengage, right? Just just leave. Um, it, you know, like, yeah. I would not hang around a game that... Um, or even engage with a game in any way uh, that where I felt the devs just don't give a shit. Yeah, kind of what Kingdrip is saying here. It's, it's like... I, I, if I thought the company was, like, basically taking the piss, then, like, disrespecting the players, then, I don't know, like, that's, that's uninstalled territory, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's more Sarah stuff, that would be really cool, yeah. Do you think more held back by the scale of the game or is a lack of resources? Uh, it's probably a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Gilwood, look, old projects are really difficult to maintain. Anyone who's worked in development will know this. When you've got an older game, it is very hard to maintain it and certainly challenging to extend it as well there's going to be a lot of legacy code there's going to be a lot of system bloat feature creep and that's definitely true in guild wars 2 right like things aren't going to be modern so the technology is not going to be as efficient so you know it, yeah like there, it's gonna be a little bit of column a and also yeah guild wars 2 is not an omega game guild wars 2 is not wow um you know the um like, World of Warcraft releases an insane amount of content, but World of Warcraft has 7.5 million subscribers. Um, you've got to bear in mind, guys, World of Warcraft is making more money in one month than Guild Wars 2 makes in a year. I think it's significantly more than that as well. Um, so, yeah, there's obviously, like, a huge resource gap as well um, in, you know, in these, uh, in these video games and these products, too. And there's the speculative stuff as well. Um, like, the World of Warcraft dev tools are apparently insanely good. It's very easy for them to make things, and they're, you know, they, they have a very streamlined pipeline. Whereas the rumors and alleged situation with Guild Wars 2 is that their dev tools are quite difficult to work with, and making things is quite challenging uh, for ArenaNet. Again, that is pure speculation, to be clear, but that's another, you know, it's kind of, like I said, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are, we are going for that guru, yeah. It'll be kind of degen hours, but yeah, me and Frost are going to get that done. All I want from Guild Wars 3 is a bit of carry over my Guild Wars 2 characters, not the gear, not the cast, but the characters. I mean, you'll definitely be able to do that. Like, you can just remake the character, right? They, but right, they'll probably look a little bit different because the customization options will probably not be exactly uniform between the two games. But yeah, you can, uh, they, I think they, didn't they, they did this with Guild Wars 2. You could, like, reserve character names. Uh, I believe so you can probably reserve your character name um, when uh, you know when the game comes out yeah. So you can probably do that While makes in a month work. Well, I mean no that no Guild Wars 2 is a big game. It makes hundreds of millions a year 
Uh, it, it's just that, you know, WoW is on another level. When it comes to all of these games, WoW is on another level. The only game that ever came close was Final Fantasy, I think, um, which was making a huge amount of money. I think they had, like, um, a good, like, one to two million subscribers uh, that were, you know... I mean, even, even that, you know, funnily enough, was, like, basically them um, profiting off World of Warcraft's uh, Shadowlands situation, which is kind of funny. Kind of funny. Uh, the fact NCSoft considered Guild Wars one of its few successful products. Uh, NCSoft West. Like, um, basically, NCSoft West is not very good, as it turns out. Basically, Guild Wars is the only successful thing to come out of NCSoft West. In terms of NC as a whole, uh, Guild Wars 2 is not as successful as the other games. But that's mostly because... Um, uh, NC in Korea is like big in mobile and stuff like that. There's a lot of mobile stuff that's going on there, which is obviously a very lucrative market, more lucrative than the PC gaming market. Uh, but yeah, in terms of NC West, which is basically, I mean, that's basically a read net now, right? Like it, that's the same thing pretty much. Um, but yeah, like that, that's the only pro like, you know, profitable project to come out of the, the West part of, uh, of NC. Is it true that Guild Wars be made? Maybe, looking like it. Yeah. NC West is uh, lineage. I don't think N wait lineage. I don't think that's NC West. Isn't that, that? I think that's like really big in Korea, no? I'm pretty sure NC West is just a nut. Uh, just um, Guild Wars. I don't think there's really anything else that we know in, in NC South West. I think all the other stuff like Aeon, it's it, 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 Aeon, it's uh, Korea, isn't it? Let's go. All games are there. Well, I mean, I guess both of them, like, exist. But I don't think anyone in the West plays this shit, to be honest, right? <laughs> but yeah, I guess you can play them in the West, too. But yeah, like who 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 in the who in like the Western audience plays Lineage, Blade and Soul and Aeon? I think like actually like zero people in the West play that. I think these games only really exist in Korea. But yeah. Indeed. I love all NCSoft products. I like that. Awesomeness is the company, man. I respect it. Wasn't Rocker into Blade and Soul? I think at one point, yeah, but then not for very long. Favorite Guild Wars 3 streamer? Yes, that's right, guys. It's me. I am your favorite Guild Wars 3 streamer. After the Gobbler patch? Yep, because using the Candy Corn Gobbler was kind of a pain in the ass um, before, you know before that patch. I guess not terribly surprising. A sponsibility on class today? Yeah, funny enough, I get that email as well. Um, I, you know, I, they actually talked about it in the in the shareholders meeting, didn't they, right? Didn't they talk about that? How, um, uh, how, like, they had recently started using influencer marketing that was making it quite expensive? That's kind of interesting. I think what's interesting, I wonder if they were talking about stuff like Twitch drops uh, and stuff like that. And, um, the Twitch front page stuff they did. I'd be really curious to know like how expensive it is, expensive it is for ArenaNet to like buy a Twitch front page spot and if it actually generates profit. I'd probably lean towards no. They haven't done it for, um, maybe they'll still do it for expansion launches because uh, they did it a couple of times. Dude, they, they, do you guys remember when they got me Twitch front page for the tunnel? Yeah, I remember that. Uh, that was awkward, wasn't it? Uh, I guess that maybe wasn't the best investment, but I, maybe it worked out for a Soto expansion launch. Yeah. The tunnel. Yeah. I love tunneling.
It's turtle time. I love tunneling. You're acting like you were enjoying the tunnel? Well... It, I mean, I was enjoying playing the game with the gang. And, you know, chatting with Kroof was fun. I don't deny it. I don't deny it, guys. Do you really think they're making Guild Wars 3? I mean, they're certainly moving in that direction. Yeah, it's confirmed. I don't know what's going on here. Why are we doing the uh, the Scrid event? What's uh, what's going on here? What's the situation? I thought, hey, we're waiting for Guild Wars 2. It's one of those games I've actually never played. I saw, like, the ads and stuff for it, but I just didn't... I didn't play it. I did not play the video game. What can I say? The Guild Wars 1? Yeah, yeah! Guild Wars 1's great. I've uh, got uh, GWAM from Guild Wars 1. Very good game. Highly recommend it. It is a good game. What is this music? This is the Mad Mole from Old School RuneScape. Would they add heroes to Guild Wars 2 Guild Wars 3 released? I don't think so. I think Guild Wars 2 is sufficiently big that it won't kind of, um... Even if most people move to Guild Wars 3, I think most... I think it will still be very playable. Because I think there will be enough people who will still want to play Guild Wars 2 over whatever is new. That's what I'd say. What will Teton be about? Uh, probably Guild Wars 3, I guess. I think the Guild Wars 3 is an April Fool's Day. It would be funny if that was the case, but it doesn't seem that way. Would the tunnel have been better if it was just the beginning of the Molten Furnace Fractal? I mean, yeah, that would have been an improvement. And old school RuneScape music goes hard, dude. It's fucking good shit. Guild Wars 3 have raids. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't do too much in that direction and said focus on open world a lot. Guild Wars 3 soundtrack is fire. I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, is it? Oh, this is the, <laughs> this is the soundtrack. <laughs> Hello, Black Samurai 92. How you doing? Yeah, you guys enjoying the mole song? Osprey's Palace Emergency Waypoint. Count me in. Oh, okay, never mind. Don't count me in. Oh, I can't take the daily. I have to spend some of my wizard coins, guys. Which I guess I'll just buy the mystic coins. That's probably the best thing you can do, isn't it? There you go. The song's over. Ah, uh, English tea or Turkish tea? Well, I mean, I'm... Look, I'm in England, so I, I go for the English breakfast tea. That's what we like to see. Now that Nike is community manager for Arena, will you invite him on a full tea time? And I have Nike on tea time all the time. Why would that change anything? Bring back the song. We want an encore. It's probably a little bit too late to go with the Desert Borderlands at this point. Guess we'll just stay. I think Guild Wars 3 is an April Fool's joke. Well, it's not April Fool's yet. No, it uh, looks pretty legit. It's pretty legit. When did Nike get Community Manager? He didn't. It's an April Fool's. Obviously. Except he did do it early on purpose uh, because he wanted to mess with people. It would be very funny if it was true, but, you know, that's uh, it's not the case. I think uh, if Guild Wars 3 comes out, it should be either close to WoW or be cross-platform action-focused game or something. Um... 
I actually would have used to think the same about the WoW thing. But after playing WoW, I don't think so. Uh, if you try and compete with that game head to head, you will be crushed. Um, so I, I don't think that anymore. I definitely think that um, going on the different direction is going to be interesting. Uh, I would love to see them really push it towards the action style thing. That would also work well on console. Uh, keep the game fairly streamlined and have a more modern approach to MMOs, I, I think would be good, yeah. But I don't think uh, doing the, the WoW clone thing is a good idea. Yeah. That is, uh, I think that is a recipe to have a dead game, uh, if you go that way, in my opinion. I think Guild Wars 2's current strategy is good, and I think an extension of that strategy in Guild Wars 3 will make a lot of sense. Kind of making sure that the game is, uh, you know, the game has its niche is probably the good strategy. Uh, I bought the game and all the Limgold story stuff less than six months ago. I played WoW for several years until BFA. They started Guild Wars 2 after years of not playing. What would you do um, if you were me? I want you to be my therapist for today, lol. How I will pay you. How WoW feels nowadays. I mean, I mean, I would just play the game. Or don't. It's entirely up to you, but I mean... Like, is Guild Wars, uh, you know, is the release of, or the, the development of Guild Wars 3 a reason to stop playing Guild Wars 2? I wouldn't say so, not really. I mean, like, I, I think it doesn't make any sense to go like, well, you know, there's a new game coming out, so there's no point in playing that. I mean, if that's your position, I guess that's fair enough, but I don't think it, it really matters. I mean, just, just play the game. If you're having fun, then play. If you're not, then don't play. That's it. Boom. Will we get another MMO manifesto? I mean, to be honest, I think Arena wouldn't do that again, purely because I think it it, it did in some ways kind of shackle them a little bit. Uh, not in a good way. Yeah. It's a response to the we give. Thank you. Yeah, and how does WoW feel? I mean, WoW feels really good, honestly. Uh, like, WoW is, is fun right now. So you can... And there's different flavors, too. You can play classic or you can play retail. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Yup. Um, how do you have that marker on your head? It's just the World vs. World simple nameplate setting. That is what it is. Yeah, you are sport for choices. There's lots of uh, good MMOs out there currently. We put up a mythic uh, raid pug this week. We're doing a. We're not doing a pug, but we're probably doing a reclear uh, with the uh, with the guild. Indeed. Incredible. You know, I found some really interesting um, YouTube comments. Like, on all of my videos, I get a bunch of comments that are like, I would feel confident about Guild Wars 3 if they fire the balance team. Where is this coming from? I, I, th I find that fascinating. I want to get involved. I want to reply to these comments. It's not trolls. No, they're not trolling. I think they actually feel this way. I don't think it's a joke. Oh, no. I feel like it must just be the case that, um, that like, players are, they, they think they know something about game balance, but they, they don't, you know? They really don't know. Yeah. It's really unhinged. 
It's completely unhinged. I think if I wanted to engage that maybe in 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 kind of steel man the position, I think people don't like the way the game plays out. But I'm not sure if people ever like the way the game play out. I feel like everyone always complains about the state of the game uh, to an extent. I'm not really sure what people want um, in the game. Maybe that would be like a good question. Maybe I should do a, a video about that. What do people actually want um, regarding uh, balance in the game? Like how do they want the game to play out? Yeah. I think a lot of it probably is a uh, skill issue. Stop um, uh, panic. Wait, who's panicking here? Two panic messages from my mates. Wait, why are people panicking? Guild Wars 3 isn't real, it can't hurt us. I mean, no, it definitely is. But if your mates are panicking, then I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, they they need to sort themselves out because that is, uh, I mean, they, they've, they're, they're peepos. They're actual like little frogmen. Having a build that's easy but still get to the top of the deep charts is the win. I mean, is that really it though? I don't know. Like, surely that can't be it. Ain't it is working on an unannounced uh, new project? Didn't say anything about Guild Wars 3. So that my English is bad. My main language is uh, Korean. Well, I mean, how? Where did? Where did? Get, how, how did? How did they get Guild Wars 3 out of that then? Right? And also, what about the NCSoft follow-up then? Like, because NCSoft followed up and said they actually have, they confirmed that they greenlit it for development. Um, so even if the first translation was scuff, and that absolutely might be the case, like, I, you know, I, I believe you, maybe the first one's weird. Why did NC double down then? Why did they say, yeah, we've actually greenlit it for production? Oh. Oh. So it's, you know, they were lying. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, they just, they made it up. Based. They made it up on the internet, guys. Oh, this is, yeah, this is not going to go very well, is it? It's not looking good. Nice. It was merely an act. What would a Guild Wars 3 even look like? <laughs> Fuck knows. Honestly, uh, it's uh, very hard to say at this point. Mm. It was free advertising. I mean, you're probably joking about that, but it really isn't. This is very bad for um, ArenaNet and bad for Guild Wars 2. Because anything that kind of sows doubt in your product, especially the future of your product, especially when... Especially the future of your product that's about to release another expansion is not advertising. That is very much anti-advertising. Not good. The only thing I don't like about Guild Wars 2 is the gear progression and how stale it is once you have the legendaries. Uh, I mean, yeah, like this is definitely not a game that really has progression in it. If you're looking for a progression game, this probably is not the one. Imagine if WoW 2 got leaked. I mean, that was kind of what Project Titan was going to be, or something similar to that, but it didn't really go anywhere. And it didn't go anywhere for a good reason. Um, the, the truth is, um, the truth is, guys, is that WoW doesn't really need a sequel, and WoW certainly doesn't need saving, right? Uh, it really doesn't. It's uh, doing just fine. Yeah. Yeah. In two days, Anit will release a statement that it was all a joke. I mean, that, if that happened, I would be incredibly entertained. Uh, but I think pretty unlikely. So good for the next six years? Yeah, I don't think anything is really happening uh, anytime soon, guys. Nobody panic. They have pretty much remake the game uh, every X. I mean, they could do it, but the question is like, why would they do it, right? I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if it will really make a lot of sense to do that. 
Guild Wars 3 joke? Yes, no. No, it's not a joke. No. And this one, I think Guild Wars 3 is actually real. Wait, guys, it was in a shareholder meeting and both companies have made statements talking about it. Like, yes. Like, if this was so, if you like hallucinated this, that would be serious cause for concern. Hmm. There have been too many psyops, guys. There have been so many psyops in the Guild Wars 2 subreddit that nobody knows what to believe anymore, I guess. What is real? Can you tell? Alright. I guess I should get the Mystic Coins, guys. I'm getting the Mystic Coins. Oh, shit. Dude, I think they're about to attack our keep. Uh-oh. I'm gonna buy some Mystic Coins. Here we go. Boom. Uh, I guess I can get all of them, can't I? Ooh. We're getting rich today. If only I could somehow duplicate these, then it would be even better. If the Mystic Coins could multiply, if you will. Nice. MMO should get a sequel every 15 years, that's just normal? I mean, should they? I mean, I'm not sure they really need to. I definitely like the idea of new games, but I don't think you actually need them. In fact, I think it's very difficult, actually, to... Um, I think it's very difficult to do sequels to MMOs. Shit ton of developers to maintain and evolve the game. Guild Wars 2 doesn't. I find that, that's a very interesting thing because wouldn't, like how would Guild Wars 3 help that, right? Like, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like if, if Guild Wars 2 right now has this problem with um, not being able to maintain and evolve, then how would making a game, another game actually help with that? And you've got like two games that you've now got to try and maintain a little bit and also evolve. See, this is what I was trying to poke at with Sneb yesterday. Like, I, I do I do not think that ArenaNet has the confidence of the player base. Um, and, by the way, I wouldn't say this is just an ArenaNet thing. If you ask the same question about Blizzard, especially during BFA and Shadowlands, people would have said, absolutely fuck no. Uh, we don't trust Blizzard. We don't trust them to make a good game. Hell, I'm not sure if I trust Blizzard right now. In fact, I definitely don't. I trust them with WoW, but not with anything else. Certainly not with Warcraft. Certainly not with StarCraft. Um, or with anything new. I'm going to be very suspicious because they just tend to fuck it up these days. Like, you know, yeah, I, I don't think people trust... Um, uh, I, I think there is a lot of mistrust and uncertainty around ArenaNet. And it's understandable, right? I'm not saying that people are irrational. It's quite the opposite. Like, if you look at the last couple of years of Guild Wars 2 development, it's been a little bit rough. Uh, to be honest. It's not, uh, not been ideal. Um, AOC is Vaporware, for sure. Um, I mean, probably not. Like, that game will probably come out eventually. The, but I think the, the big question about Ashes is, like, how close is it going to be to their actual design brief? I think, um, they have an unbelievably ambitious and widely scoped project in Ashes of Creation. And, yeah, translating that into reality, it's, it's not going to be easy. Let's put it like that. Uh, tried the Stormgate, but I actually didn't try it, no. Um, I was actually a bit surprised. I thought the game was further along in development, but it's not even close, actually. Uh, Stormgate is not coming... I, I would not say that um, Stormgate is coming out for another few years, honestly, at minimum. Um, I didn't play it, but I watched a lot of footage on, you know, Euthermal's channel, Harstam's channel, and so on, all this kind of stuff. Um, Parting was playing it a lot as well. Uh, and yeah, it's not even a tiny bit close. It's very unfinished. And I, I didn't see that one coming at you. I thought it was a little bit further along. And the way that people were talking about it um, is that, yeah, it, it was fairly far along in terms of development, but it's really not. Yeah. Yup. And like Guild Wars 1, a battle with zero updates. They can't keep two MMOs alive at the same time. They barely manage one. Uh, that's probably true, yeah. Like, it, when Guild Wars 3 eventually drops, if it does eventually drop, that will that will actually be the end for Guild Wars 2. That will be actual maintenance mode. Like, Guild Wars 1 is in maintenance mode right now, and Guild Wars 2 would also enter maintenance mode. Yup. Yup. Guild Wars 2 is already dead. See, 
This is what I'm talking about. Like, why do people really think this too? People think that Guild Wars 2 is fucking dead. Um, are you thermal so impressive narrating or playing StarCraft 2? Yeah, I think um, a lot of people don't know. I, I think it's the content creation thing. Like, people think content creators are bad at games. Um, I think people really underestimate just how good Euthermal is. Uh, I think less so with Harstam, because he still does a lot of the pro gaming stuff. But um, yeah, with Euthermal, because he does, he's a content creator, he's a retired pro gamer. I think people really um, forget how insanely good he is at StarCraft 2. Um, Euthermal was a world-class player when he was playing professionally, he even won a major tournament actually, with like 7k MMR on the 1v1 ladder, which is insane. Um, actually, uh, in, in terms of his 1v1 performance. Like, he's extremely good. He's very, very, very good. Um, but yeah, people tend to forget that a little bit because he's the YouTube man. He's the YouTube man. Uh, what do you think about ASC's combat? Uh, looks kind of bland. I mean, it's very unfinished, right? Like, the game's not coming out for at least another couple of years, so it's hard to say. Um, what, look, um, Under the Hood subscriber ID on Twitch is zero one. Oh yeah, a lot of the StarCraft guys, they're the originals, right? They're the actual original streamers. Um, it's, it's funny to think about, but yeah, like a lot of the original big streamers, uh, I, I think, I, I think a really interesting example actually, and, uh, one who's still going today is Destiny, right? Like Destiny started, got its start in StarCraft 2 Esports. Uh, and then obviously it's kind of moved into political commentary, right? But a lot of the guys who were in SC2, they were the originals. Yeah, people like Day9, um, you know, you had people like Idra back then as well, in control, Total Biscuit as well. That was more WoW, of course, was where Total Biscuit started, and then into StarCraft 2 as well. And um, that area of esports, right, like all these guys, they're, they're the OGs, right? They've been around forever, right? They've been around forever. Um... It's where a lot of it started. Like, a big part of Twitch was StarCraft, right? Um, and RTS in general. Oh, yes. Uh, XUC and uh, Asmongul. Yeah, I mean, Asm's been around for a long time as well. Like, uh, for in World of Warcraft, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and Day 9's still going strong today, right? He's uh, doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Are you the Dune Messiah that will get us to paradise? Guild Wars 3. Well, I, mean, I think that's quite funny given like how Dune Messiah actually plays out. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to quite do that. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, uh, no, no, we're talking about Age of Conan. No, we're not talking about that. Deviate too much from the franchise. They definitely won't change the art style. I think uh, Guild Wars will keep it. It's very distinctive, right? Like Guild Wars 1 carried over to Guild Wars 2 pretty well, I think. Uh, and I think they won't ditch the art style, that's for sure. Are you still many Shaman phase through of SOD? The shield changes for Warden are interesting, but uh, could backfire. Um, Shaman tank, I think, is definitely going to be very heavily nerfed. It will still be perfectly playable, obviously, and Shaman utility is very, very strong. I think the single target damage is going to be fairly mediocre, to be honest, um, for Shaman. It might get saved by mental agility, and then you play Lava Burst on the hand rune, and you Maelstrom weapon Lava Burst. But because you're not dual wielding, you've got your Maelstrom procs going to be way worse uh, overall, to be honest. Like... I, I think if if possible, I think I'd rather play Enhance as a DPS, actually. I think Enhance DPS is going to be extremely strong in Phase 3 uh, with SOD. However, Shaman Tank, I think, is going to be significantly weaker. It is going to be much, 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 much weaker um, in terms of that. And yeah, the mana issues are also there as well. I think it's going to be actually alleviated significantly, those shenanigans, because of how many Shamans you can stack. Bear in mind, they haven't nerfed Shamanistic Rage, and realistically, you're going to be running multiple Enhancement Shamans, maybe a Resto Shaman, and that means that you're going to have multi um you're going to have a lot of shamanistic rage which is going to alleviate your mana issues significantly you're going to have like four shamans right um and with that you can just set up a rotation for shamanistic rage and that will i think help a lot uh with the mana issues in fact i think they're going to have to nerf shamanistic rage i think it's insanely overpowered the fact that it gives mana back to your entire raid is pretty broken i mean it's very broken actually um so realistically they're going to have to they're going to have to address that uh, is it classic with deviates from retail? Uh, it's, no, it's basically it's basically like old school RuneScape, but uh, but wow, pretty much. 
uh, that Flash legitimately played a pro Brood War tournament as random. That's arguably the most talented pro gamer ever. Yeah, I think he's absolutely a contender for uh, best pro gamer of all time, yeah. Um, like, there's loads of really cool YouTube content about Flash, but Flash, like, his level of dominance is unbelievable, um, particularly in Brood War. Um, to the point where they literally tried to force him to lose, and he did lose, actually. They basically made, like, the most horrifically anti-Terran tournament ever with, like, the worst possible maps for Terran uh, in Brood War. And I think he actually did end up losing, but, like, every other Terran got fucking massacred, right? Because of how bad the maps were for uh, Terran in this particular tournament. But, yeah, like, that level of uh, dominance from Flash in, in Brood War is... Is it's on another level to be honest. Uh, certainly a, a big contender for greatest pro gamer of all time, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's yeah, certainly a contender. Yeah. Let's go. Or synthesizer. Only Terran who made it? Yeah, I think he was basically the only one who made it that far. Um, and then eventually didn't win the tournament, but nearly did. Ain't it to do a MOBA game, seriously? I mean, yeah, that could be interesting. Which made in the last epoch? I have no opinion. I know nothing about the game. From uh, the kid Serral? I mean, yeah, Serral is definitely the current uh, the current GOAT. And probably the StarCraft 2 GOAT. Although, it, like the, the whole GOAT argument is very difficult to... It's very difficult to even talk about in a reasonable way because it's so dependent on the time, right? Like, is Serral probably the best mechanical player of StarCraft 2 of all time? Yes. But StarCraft 2 isn't as alive as it once was, right? So you could argue, like, uh, players like MVP or, uh, you know, uh, players like MVP, for example, in, in kind of the early days. Or even players like Life before he basically got banned from StarCraft for match fixing, right? Like, these players are arguably more goatee given their position or well, you can look at someone like maru right because of how dominant he is in the korean scene it's it's like very difficult to uh talk about that with gsl indeed it's very difficult to talk about that kind of stuff but yeah i mean Cyril is the best player in the world right now in starcraft like that's i think that's almost indisputable like you know you, he doesn't lose you really don't beat that guy Hello, Dragon Bless ninety six. How you doing? Yeah. First Garth with rifts and converging for future Guild Wars three content. I, and I think that Soto they were definitely trying to figure out like, can we make some replayable stuff? Like they were probably trying to figure out some avenues for making more replayable content for sure. It's almost 10 p.m. and the store is 50 minute walk away. Do I buy dinner or starve until tomorrow in game? Nothing at home. I mean, the store is 50 minutes walks. So I mean, look, you can get some exercise in for the day and pick yourself up a snack. Seems like a win-win to me. Let's go. Guild Wars 3 definitely needs a Hall of Heroes mode. The truth is, is that the games are fundamentally different, so you're not going to get the same thing. It's always going to be different. You're never going to have, like, a clone of the old game. Uh, stuff like Hall of Heroes, it's it's not really going to come back, um, to be honest. Like, you can probably get something that's, you know, you, yeah, because Guild Wars 1 is just too fundamentally different from anything for anything like that to ever really exist. Hey, thank you indeed. I am having a good day. Welcome. Welcome. Not gonna sleep for another six, seven hours? Exactly. So you might as well get out there. What's gonna be the god walking amongst mere mortals of Guild Wars 3? Uh, it'll probably just be like, probably to do with legendaries and stuff, I imagine. Or that will be, well, I mean, it will be multifaceted, obviously. Yeah. One of the coolest PvP modes game modes ever, though. Yeah, and there'll be a new coolest PvP game mode ever in Guild Wars 2 or Guild Wars 3. Mean if they carry forward legendary armies, they absolutely will not do that. Um, there is no way they're going to launch a fresh MMO where it's possible to have already done most of the progression before the game is even out. Like, that one, you're kind of making your game like almost DOA because like players are going to have nothing to do. But also, it's just a very weird 
very weird look for new players. If new players see that and go, wait a minute, like all these people have already done all the progression day one? What the fuck is going on here, right? Like that's, uh, that's not going to go well. So yeah, they, they won't do that. The biggest uh, shit aspect of this whole thing is now uh, everything wrong will be the fault of Guild Wars 3. And we'll see that in the next X-Pack. Everything um, that's lacking will proceed to be lacking. We'll shift the combo in Guild Wars 3 and take a result from Guild Wars 2. Yeah, like, I'm, I think this was already going to happen no matter what. A little bit, Nanny, I think, because they it was confirmed that Anet are working on other projects. Um, and to be honest, I, okay, let's actually kind of flame ArenaNet here a little bit. Um, ArenaNet says stuff like, we are fully focused on Guild Wars 2. And then they also start hiring people for Unreal. They start hiring people for pre-production on another title. Like, this messaging, it, it does not build trust. Okay? Um, it really doesn't. Like, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I, I know, look. It is unreasonable to expect any games company to put all their eggs in one basket, but ArenaNet really should be a little bit more careful in their communication. Because they say, oh yeah, we're fully focused on the game, and then there's a bunch of um, job applications for another game. Like, obviously that's not going to look good. Obviously that's going to stress people out. Obviously that's going to make people not believe you. Um, I will definitely confess, guys, um, in Guild Wars 2, I don't buy the corpus speak. I will admit that um, at this point. I really don't. And that's kind of sad, but it, it is where I'm at. Like, I look at that and I go, hmm, I need to see it to believe it uh, at this point, right? Like, it's not going to be good enough for them to make some kind of statement and I'll just believe it at face value. No, they're going to have to show me. Uh, I, I don't believe it. Uh, to be honest. Because we've heard that one before. How many times has ArenaNet said, oh yeah, for this time for real. This time, guys, for realsies. We're working big on Guild Wars 2. Like, they've said that like five times over the history of the games. And... To be clear, that's under a different administration. That, a lot of this was kind of under the Mike O'Brien era, under the Mike Z era. It was complete bullshit every time, especially the Mike O'Brien stuff. The Mike O'Brien was, I think, pretty trust shattering when they said, yep, we're restructuring to give you guys more content. And then it turns out that Guild Wars 2 was complete backburner to the point where they were thinking of ending it with season four. Like, unironically, they were, they were thinking of killing the game, basically, with season four and then moving on to fucking Bird Simulator or the Dune MMO or whatever the hell they were doing, right, um, at the time. Like, yeah, but it, it was, it was, look, let's not pull punches, guys. They lied. Uh, ArenaNet lied to us. Uh, there's no other way of putting it in, in, in a way that um, isn't going to sound like a shill. Yeah, they have lied to us repeatedly in the past. So you'll forgive me for being a little bit skeptical uh, of a lot of this stuff. Ah... Indeed. Edgy meme bear in the chat. Nice. Uh, very behind on the lore, it seems. Oh yeah, there's some there's some lore. Yeah. After HT launched, that Colin Hansen wanted to make Guild Wars Three or leaves the company. Maybe he's yeah, maybe uh, him coming back. I mean, look. I, I will um, look. I'm gonna tell you guys something very very important. Um, and look, this is very fitting with I guess uh, Dune, right? Uh, don't trust. Don't trust individual charismatic devs, okay? Uh, like it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't trust Todd Howard's. I can't imagine they will have um, three pay to play. No sub games running in parallel. Now they won't do sub. I think one of the kind of defining things about Guild Wars 2 is the lack of sub. I'll believe Guild Wars when I see the launch trailer. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not coming out for a while. And it could very easily get uh, cancelled too. Or like turn into something else. 100%.
100%. Let's go. I'll believe in Guild Wars 2 when the game releases, guys. That's when I'm going to believe it. Edgy Mimbi, I gift subs. I believe that is 10 subs. Once again, very nice. 10 gifted subs from Edgy Mimba. We love to see that. The sub count rebuilds. Edgy Mimba, new sponsor of the stream. Very nice. I love to see that. Very good. Very, very good. Not an improvement on Soto, then the morale will not be good to say the least. The entire community might be um, alright, but this is a game of fancy scene for Guilds 3. It's going to be a big hit to the x back after that. Uh, I definitely think the next expansion is very important for sure. And I certainly think that, yeah. Look, I am definitely expecting... Um, we get a tea time? Yeah, there should be tea time this weekend. I'll get something together. Um, I am expecting the expansion to be a more polished version of Soto. So that is to say... Um, it will be probably a similar amount of content, but probably arranged in a better order. Like, that would be, um, what I would say. So, for example, there'll be more on launch. I think the biggest thing that went wrong with Soto is the stuff on launch was kind of lacking, to be honest. There wasn't really much to do, um, on the launch of the game. Nothing to really chase after or grind or collect. And I think that was not good, um, to be honest. And let's see, what else? Uh, they will probably... I, I feel like... I, I don't know. I, I, this would be like my personal thing, but I really didn't like the open world meta events. I, I'd hope they'd make them a little bit more combat focused, um, which would be which would be nice, but I'm not sure if... Uh, I'm not sure if Anet feel that way. I'm not sure if they'd agree with me on that uh, or like how the general player base feels about that. Why multi-boxing spamming and people use multiple accounts in win trade? Listen, okay? Win trading is very minor in Guild Wars 2. There's really not a lot of win trading that goes on. Like, does it happen? Absolutely. Is it really shitty and should they get permanently banned? Absolutely. But trust me, the reason you're losing your gold game is not because of win trading. If you're losing a game in gold, it's because you are gold, basically. Uh, and that's what's going on there. Yeah. That is the reality of the situation. And there's nothing wrong with being in gold. Um, it's just that, look, if you want to get better at the game, you the, the first thing you need to do is you need to stop blaming external factors for why you lose. Like, if you're, if you're playing, right, you know, you know you're playing uh, PvP, and you're going, well, the reason why I'm not winning this game is because, oh yeah, my team sucks. Oh, it's because um, of win trading. Oh, it's because of balance. Then, I'm not going to lie, that's just not really the, the way that you grow as a player and get better at the game. And you've kind of hit a dead end at that point. Yeah, or like lag or whatever. It's 400 to 200 against top 10. I mean... What? I mean, yeah, like, that that's, you know, not an unreasonable score to have, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I lose games because Rush goes in the opposite direction. Well, I mean, honestly, that's legitimate. Like, you can blame that, but they, they supposedly fixed that, so maybe we're good to go. I have issue with bots on PvP. It's just boring. Uh, I do have some good news for you. Um realistically, bots are better than the average Guild Wars 2 player. And two, most of the people who you think are bots, to be honest, they're probably just little peepos, right? Who just aren't very good at the game. Like, that is the reality there. Uh, there definitely are bots in the game. I mean, there are bots in every MMO. Is it a major issue? No, uh, it, it is not, uh, to be honest. I think you're avoiding to talk about them. No, trust me, I'm really not. Uh, in fact, uh, every single season, I know who's win trading because people always complain to me because people pretend that I'm a fucking Anet dev and I can ban them. Uh, because that's what it's like being a, a streamer who engages with PvP sometimes, right? Like, trust me, I know who's doing it. Um, and I know that people are doing it. But I also know that realistically, not many people do it. Uh, it's a very minor issue. Does it suck? Yes. Do I wish Anet would take more action? Yes. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's, you know, it, it feels bad. Yeah. 
Yeah. One of Team USA told me all of this. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I don't doubt it. Yeah, I mean, like, there, there is win trading. It sucks, but it's not a big deal. Um, you know, I, I think getting rank one is a bit annoying um, with, uh, you know, because of win trading sometimes. Uh, however, getting a decent rating, like getting into plat three or getting into the top 10, uh, win trading is not going to prevent you from doing that. And it's certainly not going to prevent you from winning the monthly AT. Uh, if you, if you, and that's the most relevant achievement in the game anyway. Yeah. We love to see it. The next expansion will be all about PvP. I actually think if anything, a Readnet will entirely remove PvP. Uh, because I think that... Um, maintaining all these game modes is very difficult. Um, to in truth, I think uh, even WoW struggles with this. Because um, they basically have three game modes. They have PvP, uh, Raids, and Mythic Plus. And to be honest, it's very non-trivial for them to maintain all three of those uh, simultaneously. Um, like, and, and that's, that's Blizzard, right? So I wouldn't be surprised to see... I think um, if a Readnet was very focused on world versus world and open world PvE, I think that would be a really good idea. Um, that's probably what I would do if I was uh, a net leader, is I would make a pure open world PvE and uh, open world PvP game. Uh, game. Um, you, prob you probably throw in some dungeon style stuff as well, because that's like very standard MMO fare. I would be really interested if they actually made a unified group size. Um, so instead of having, ah, I don't know, because I, I think a Readnet kind of struggles with having to do, um, raids and dungeons, basically, like fractals and strike missions. They essentially have to spread themselves very thin. One dungeon a year, guys, is very low. That's really not a lot of content. And then two raid bosses a year is also a very low amount of content for an MMO. Um, so I'd wonder if... ArenaNet would attempt something like a unified group content setting. So, eight players maybe, which I believe is what Final Fantasy has, at least in their raid content. Have an eight-player group or something like that, um, and instead make it so that you actually have raids and dungeons at the same group size, right? I mean, eight is maybe too many, though. Like, five is a really good number, right? Like, five people is pretty easy. And you could make, you could, I and mean, they'd almost certainly, they'd almost certainly lean into, um, um, an auto group finder, though, so it would be way less of an issue. I'm asking why ArenaNet is allowing multiboxing. I mean, ANET doesn't allow multiboxing in PvP, and realistically, people don't really multibox in PvP. <coughs> And look, Black Samurai 92, I'm going to give you some advice. The question you've got to ask yourself here is, how affected are you by people multiboxing? And here's the reality. Multiboxing doesn't affect you. Uh, and... Stop worrying about shit that doesn't matter. And if you can't do that, quit the game. They told me they're spamming PvP alts and Q at the same time. Um, I mean, yeah, people do that. That's one of the reasons how people win trade. Yeah. But it's extremely uncommon. This is... It's not, a, like, a common thing that happens. Look. Okay. Black Star 92. Quit the game. Uh, you're not going to see reason on this, I already know. Uh, I, you're mentally broken, you're mentally incapable of handling this. You should uninstall the game. Yeah. Because if you're incapable of not obsessing over stuff that really isn't that important, you should, t you need to get away from the game. Like, you need to escape. That is the reality. Boom. 
this derail skip is huge. Well, I mean, look. Sometimes you've got to get out, guys. You've got to, you know, break away. You have to be free. You know what I'm saying, guys? Do you think they should uh, get rid of mounts in World vs. World? Uh, yes, I think that mounts and gliding have no place in World vs. World. Oh yeah, woo yeah, baby. Nice. Add siege turtles for a season? No, let's not do that. No siege turtles. Do you have a release date for Guild Wars 3 yet next month? I mean, yeah, that would be quite ambitious. No. It should be crafting in Guild Wars 3. I think a Mystic Forge-like thing is good enough. To be honest, I actually think the Mystic Forge was a huge mistake. Um, oh, well, mm, uh, actually, not necessarily. I would say, like, the implementation of it. Like, I think the Mystic Forge is unbelievably opaque to new players. It is a bad implementation of the system. I don't hate the fact that, you know, it's basically crafting, but you don't need a crafting skill. Like, that's kind of what they were going for there. Um, even though for a lot of, like, the big stuff, you kind of do need, um, uh, you know, a, a crafting skill for, like, legendaries and stuff. But the issue with uh, the Mystic Forge is how opaque it is. Like, it is... How would you possibly know the recipes for the Mystic Forge without looking them up, right? Like, you literally don't. Like, and, you know, funny enough, I think that actually was intentional. Like, um, their original vision for the Mystic Forge was very much, you know people would figure out these recipes and talk to each other and it would kind of be this community knowledge thing, right? Where people talk to each other and share recipes and stuff like that. But to be honest, I don't think it, that's a good idea. It's an interesting idea, but it's not a good idea. Um, and you can see they kind of go back on that like because they, they, they kind of show you the recipes now on some of the gifts, like here, for example, on the gift of battle, you can kind of see that, but it's still so unbelievably opaque. It, it's really not good. Um, at all. Yeah. Ah. Make dungeons be a part of early story. Uh, with the equipment of Explorer be a fractal. And then make the final encounter story mode raid that comes regularly after you be it was. I mean, I think stuff like that is way too complicated. Like, some of that is cool, but I feel like it's overscoped. Like, could Blizzard do something like that? Yes. Can ArenaNet do something like that? No. Not because they're incompetent, to be clear, because that is a that is a big scope, right? And and look, this is definitely where I think that um, Guild Wars 2 and all MMOs can actually learn from World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft has a surprisingly narrow scope. It, it really does. Um, you have... Mythic Plus Dungeons, you have Raiding, you have Open World Quests, which are just, you know, quests that happen in the open world and they're replayable. You have the story stuff, and you have Arena PvP. That That's like the big focus. That, I know there are Raided Battlegrounds as well and all that kind of stuff, but the main PvP game mode ultimately is Arenas, right? And stuff like that. That's, you know, that's where the esports is at, right? Like, yeah. WoW is quite narrowly scoped, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and I think that's a smart decision. They don't bloat the game. It's, you know, the game is very streamlined in terms of its in-game systems. I'm new on Necro. Can you say anything useful for a beginner? Uh, your positioning on Necro is very important. Boom. Watch your feet. What do you think Guild Wars 3 combat should be? Uh, probably, probably a little bit how Guild Wars 2 PvP plays out now. Um, like permanent boons? Not a good idea. No one plays WoW Arena anymore? Oh, I guess I must have hallucinated that $250,000 esports tournament then. Uh, tell me what recipe to do somehow. Yeah, exactly. I think it's it's a, a little um a little opaque. Yeah. Should be baseline. Yeah, but the thing is, even if that was baseline, that's like living hell, right? You you have to like search through a billion zillion recipes. Like crafting in Guild Wars 2 is like unbelievably overcomplicated, to be honest. Like it's uh 
It's a very cursed system. Uh, wow Arena is um, 5v5. Uh, it's got a couple of variants, right? It's like 2v2, 3v3, and 5v5. I think the one that uh, is like the competitive one is usually 3v3, I think. Oh. You love to see it. Um, 30 minutes in Arena and Wow. I believe that in... I think you're talking about Solo Shuffle, right? Uh, and... I don't really... I haven't played that game mode. I'm very unfamiliar with it because it didn't exist when I really was playing Wow and doing PvP there. But, I mean, yeah. As I understand it, there's some, some pretty big issues with that particular game mode, yeah. Uh, especially with healers. People told me there's like zero fucking healers. Yeah. Incredible. Interactive crafting. Yeah, I, I think um, that's kind of interesting to go in that direction if you make crafting more of a big thing. I definitely like the idea of crafting being a big enough deal that it can be your only game mode. I think that's actually really exciting in an MMO. It's kind of like that in EVE Online, right? I think. Um, you know, and is the crafting that interactive in that game? Uh, not, not really, no. It's, you know, it's waiting for progress bars to fill, more or less. But I think that is cool. I think that many players actually do kind of want, you know, they want to role play, you know, like a blacksmith, right? Or a tailor or something like that. And you want to, you know, want to be the guy who makes stuff for other people, like, you know, really good, you know, good at making weapons, right? Or is it makes magical staves and stuff like that. And you can, like, sell them to other people. I just think that's pretty cool, honestly. I, I think that is actually really fun. Um, uh, a cool idea, and I think uh, exploring that in uh, in development is is a cool idea. It's very difficult to make like a good interactive um, crafting system, though, for sure. Yeah. In a time where bots exist, that will never be viable. Yeah, botting definitely is a major obstacle to that, um, for sure. I think um, games like New World tried to do this, like, and I, I th and try to make it so that crafting is like a really really big deal. Uh, within the game, but yeah, botting is always going to be the enemy of stuff like crafting because bots will basically destroy the margins of stuff like that pretty effectively, uh, which is you know a bit of a bit of a feels bad moment. The sound design was so cool. Yeah, the gal. I, what I really liked about New World is that you know you could gather water from any body of water in the game. You know you could pick up basically any rock. You could mine pretty much any rock that existed. You could chop pretty much any tree. Man, that was so cool. I, I Stuff like that is, is pretty awesome, to be honest. It's really, really fun. Uh, and yeah, you could pick up like any plant. You can just like, you know, grab the grass that's on the ground, right? And just like pick it up and loot it and stuff like that. That was fun. That was fun. Imagine a skill system in Guild Wars is like EVE Online. I d well, I don't like the- uh, To be honest, the EVE Online skill system fucking sucks. Let's be honest here. But what you're talking about is classless design. And I think this is going to be- This is one of my hot MMO takes, actually. I, I think that this is a very unpopular opinion. I massively prefer classless uh, to- um, class designs, to be honest. That's why one of the things I also really liked about New World was the classless approach. You make one character, and you can use any weapons you want, basically. And you can basically build your own class, right? That's what, you know, that's essentially what you do, is you build your own class in that game by putting together two weapons. It was better when it was three, but, you know, whatever. Like, the idea is still there. I actually like that. Classes is cool. And that's why Eve is cool. Um, the the Eve stuff is actually really cool for another another. I think this is less so because the, the game is a little bit pay to win. Unfortunately, kind of sucks. Um, but what's really cool about Eve is that because skill training takes so long. For example, guys, like training all the skills in Eve literally takes years, like years and years and years and years. It kind of means that everyone's character is a little bit different. Like everyone actually is unique. Um, in terms of what skills they've developed and so on. It's less so now because obviously people follow a meta. People have multiple characters, right? They build different characters. They do multi-skill training. They buy skill points, right? It, the pay to win has kind of eroded that a little bit uh, in EVE, uh, to be honest. But it's, it's kind of a cool concept, right? Is that you... EVE is a very interesting game in that you... 
in its original philosophy, you can't have everything. You can't train every skill. That's quite unrealistic. There are a couple of people who have maxed out EVE. Like, they have every single skill trained to maximum. Uh, but the original design philosophy of the game was very much like you're not supposed to be able to train every skill. You're not supposed to be able to fly every ship optimally, which I think was actually really cool. But uh, it's also a little bit anti-completionist, which I can understand kind of uh, rubbing people the wrong way too. Uh, one of the things that never seems to work out. I mean, it's hard to do, obviously. Um, and I think it's probably a little bit less popular than uh, class design uh, overall. But I, I think it does work out. I think it's one of the things that did work out pretty well in New World. I actually really like the um, skill and kind of uh, talent trait system in that game. Where you have two trees of... Uh, skills like each weapon has two trees basically and you can actually mix and match them right so you can put points in eat both of the trees get abilities from both of the trees uh, get the passives from both of the trees i just think that's really fun um to be honest it's, it's a really cool system actually it's easy to understand it's there's some room for creativity in there and you know you can come up with all sorts of crazy stuff i think it's actually quite nice um in, in that game it's, it's well done it's one of the things that about the game that's actually pretty well done i think uh overall Um, do you reckon Guild Wars 3 will be a return to fully customizable multi-class and attribute scaling skill wars like Guild Wars 1 or sit with fixed weapon skills and pick from you a few slots? That's a really good question, honestly. Um, I think that's a difficult one to answer as well. Because on the one hand, I think that the Guild Wars 2 skill system is actually really good. But I think people did... Do, one thing that does actually rub people a little bit the wrong way is that you can't choose what any wep whatever weapon you want, basically. And use... Um, and use, like, whatever skills you want with whatever weapon you want. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them kind of iterate on Guild Wars 2 a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Class design has invisible class in it. Of course, yeah. I mean, there's always going to be, like, the best combo. Um, but it, it often will lead to a lot of variety. Like, if everything's relatively well balanced, then there's going to be, like, a lot of different combos that end up being good. Which I think is kind of cool. And what I like about it is um, it's emergent, right? Like, there's, uh, what I really love about MMOs is that the players are the game. This is what I'm looking for in MMOs, is that the game is defined by the players. And that's what's really cool about um, Classless, is that instead of, like, selecting your class, the game says, here's a bunch of weapons, make something from this. Make a class out of this. That's really fun, because that's, um, that's the player's impacting the game in a very fundamental way i think that's really cool i like that a lot um to be honest like that's kind of like mmo magic like that's the holy grail of mmo like the holy grail of mmo is basically all of the game is defined by the players like it's like a perfect sandbox i know that's not for everyone but that's that's my take on like perfect mmo is everything in the game is set by the players which is why i was so excited for new world because that was how it was going to be they move back on that a lot, but originally in New World, right, you could build your settlement anywhere, basically, and, like, customize it completely. You know, you could set the prices for stuff. You could fortify your town however you wanted to. Like, you you know, all the factions were player-defined. I didn't like that they went to factions like, you know, the Covenant, right, and all that kind of stuff, um, instead of going with, um, you know, uh, companies, right? Like, how it is in EVE, everything being player-defined. Like, they moved away from that a lot, but, yeah, that was very hype, actually. Uh, New World is adding about face and more movement. Yo, dude, I like that. About for every MMO should have about face. That's huge. Ah, Jester in the chat. Are you enjoying the prequest, Jester? Everyone uses weapons in the same way. Class and guilds share weapons. You can use them in very different uh, ways sometimes. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a downside of classes, right? Is that, you know, a sword is a sword, right? And there's no, you know, there's no, like, necromancer sword or elementalist sword in New World, for sure. Uh, that's, that's a downside of the classes, for sure. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um, I've given up. It's impossible for me to kill a 45 solo. I don't hit it at all. It's red, and if it's red, I am dead. Man, yeah, that's the warrior experience, to be honest. Like, meanwhile, I'm on my enhancement charming, uh, soloing level 48 and 49 mobs. Enhancement shaman.avi. That 10% hit rune uh, is putting in the work. 
Warrior really needs a hit rune, to be honest. The other boys are not doing prequest, by the way. Wait, who's not prequesting? Uh, Mystic boys? Well, I guess they're just going to be grinding dungeons then. That's fine. They're fucking casuals. It's fine. I'll turn them into hardcore gamers. Guild Wars 3 leak already? Well, not really a leak, but kind of like a soft announcement that it's, you know, it's kind of, it might happen. It's kind of a, something's happening. Me and you tank, by the way? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Is that confirmed? I think it'll be better if um, someone else tanks. I think Enhance is pretty fucking, it's going to be scuffed as fuck, but I mean, I'm fine with that. I will tank. Yeah. Tank Lord. Open beta this year. The other DM'd me, saying I was okay with tanking. He had a doubt of necessity. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can tank. No problem then. Hi, right, Patient Zero. Thanks for the resub. I appreciate it. Very good. Why are you doing the uh, Warlock tank thing? Because, honestly, I was a bit disappointed by it. And uh, Shaman was really OP. So I played Shaman. Huge. Very nice. We love to see it. Guild Wars 3, is this shit real? It is indeed real. Confirmed. Jester is pee pee poo poo. You should do the uh, skin debate. Well, like, the, you know, the skin debate about, like, keeping the cosmetics. I mean, they'll probably just say, like, Hall of Monuments, right? They'll uh, keep it going. Probably. Probably. Oh, this is bad, isn't it? What reasons will you think they will give for making Guild Wars 3? I mean, they, they want to make a product that makes money. Boom. There you go. Any advice on who loves the game but gets overwhelmed by the sheer amount of things to do? Um, realize that it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, just play the game and see what you find fun. Experiment, try different things. That's the advice I'd give you. Yo! Keep Legend as MTX as lunatic take. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure about that one. You know, I, I think that's uh, that's probably a little on the unrealistic side. Not sure about that one. Wonder if NC Soft will uh, make. Um Anet use instead of the accounts of Anet accounts for Guild Wars 3. I think very unlikely. I think the entities are pretty separate. I think ArenaNet is kind of its own thing a fair bit. Green lighting Guild Wars 3 probably means Soto was success. I mean financially it definitely was, yeah. Um or I mean it it <laughs> it also means that maybe they just want to make even more money, right? And NCSoft likes likes making sequels uh, as well. Uh, bring out Legends of the Guild 3, it absolutely will not. Um, there is no way they will let you keep, like, five, ten years of progression in the new game. That would be ridiculous. Uh, number one reason for Guild Wars 3? Uh, I mean, maybe. I would very much encourage you to not speculate on this, though. Uh, because the, the answer might depress you. Like, it's, it's always gonna be, like, you know... Gotta make some money here, guys. Ah. I'm here for the uh, three world fiesta. Well, you've come to the right place. On world of abilities, supply mastery, maybe? Uh, probably get like the basic siege stuff first. That's a good place to start. Here is a non-issue. You can stats up on the fly. I mean, they definitely wouldn't do that. I think, if anything, they'd probably go more progression. I think it's one of the things that maybe causes players to kind of bounce off Guild Wars 2 a little bit is they feel like there's nothing to do. 
but we'll see. Guild Wars 3 is heavily invested in Asia community. Well, there you go. Revelation 1992 is back, guys. Here it is. Revelation is God. Seven years away from launch, you can chill. I mean, yeah, like, I'd say five years is a very reasonable timeline to expect. That is for sure. This chat is now in Zaza mode. Interesting. Very interesting. What drove me uh, away from Guild Wars on two expansions behind? Too big of an investment to come back? I mean, is it? If, you know, if you... That's really not that much. That's like, I don't know. A couple of weeks of playing. You'll be all caught up. Honestly, maybe even less than that. Ah, oh, yeah, you gotta get the auto loot stuff. That is true, actually. Not having auto loot doesn't feel good. Very true. Publishers only depends on NA and EU because MMORPG is dead in Asia. I'm not sure if that's true, to be honest. Millions of people rather play in smartphone than playing on computer. I mean, yeah, mobile gaming is pretty big. Mobile gaming is juiced. The Martin kept me away. I was convinced I would never catch up. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. The people say this stuff. Because I feel like... What MMO is hard to catch up in? Maybe there's some, like, Korean grinder MMOs that are really hard to catch up. And maybe I guess it's hard to, like, catch up in RuneScape. Because getting, like, level 99 takes a while. Yeah, okay. But I feel like... This whole idea of MMOs, like leaving you behind is kind of funny to be honest it's, I, it's it's a bit mythical you know in tibia i guarantee you yeah that's like a giga grindy game i think right um wait actually oh wait isn't that the game that yeah no the, yeah this is in tibia right is it has did anyone has everyone gone into like the special door oh i think no i think someone did go into the special door or something like that yeah, like the, the, the special one that was like mega, you had to be like an Omega grinder, right, to, uh, to get into the special door. Yeah. Ah, yes, the 999 door, very exciting. Infinite levels. Throw a ton of catch-up mats uh, and gear at you. Yeah. What was behind the 999 door? Okay, here we go. Let's actually see. Ah, here we go. It was in 2019, I guess. Very unfunny joke. Wait, 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 wait what, what was behind it? That is quite funny, actually. Oh, shit. Okay, this guy, look, this guy's going in. Let's see what, let's see what's going on. Okay, he's going into the door. Let's go. Get in there. He's in. He went in the door. What else, what, what's going on, though? There's nothing in there. Is that, is that like a teleport? Maybe that's a teleporter. Touch the thing. Touch it. Yeah, he is, he is fucking stalling. What are you doing, bro? Ah, there, oh, there you go. There it is. There, it's like a desert island. Well, there you go. I mean... I guess that's something. I don't know what I was expecting. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, there's uh, some NPCs. 
Well, I mean, I don't know what this is. I don't play the game. Maybe this is something, but I don't know. But, it, you know, there's some NPCs here, I guess. And, uh, you know, you can just chill out on the beach. An aisle with a queue of level 99 NPCs waiting for a price. It's nothing? No one ever planned the making? Oh, man, that sucks. I feel like if I was the dev of this game, I would, you know, I would realize that someone was going to make it and, you know, put something there. I guess it is what it is. It would have been very funny if it just reset you back to level one. That would have been a very sick joke, but also quite funny. You can actually buy characters in that game now? That feels bad. Unlucky. Uh, here we go. Current, okay, current auctions. Is this like what I'm looking for? Current auctions? Okay. Tibia coins. Okay, here we go, guys. I can buy a... How much is a Tibia coin, guys, in real money? I can buy a level 1,142 character with 52,001 Tibia coins. I don't know how much that is, though. 250 was $9? Oh my god! Okay, well that's quite expensive then. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that's quite a lot of money, guys. It's an expensive character. So that's like two grand then. It's like two thousand dollars, I guess, for this guy. I guess some of these are not that expensive. Level five hundred character is two thousand. Level two hundred and sixty one character for just two hundred and fifty three coins. Hmm. Well, I guess it is what it is. There are amounts in this game that people spend five thousand US dollars on? What the hell? I mean, that, I mean, well, I mean, I guess it's their money. That's fair enough. It is what it is. Uh, wait, what is this? What have we got here? 525. Okay, I'm doing it. Here we go. New audience. If it does, there would be some overlap. There always is. Okay. There's people that enjoy many different types of games. But that is true. There's also teapots that can play one game for 10 years and be super happy. That is also true. That's fine. Yeah, he knows. He has the critical information. <laughs> he, has, he has the information. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's based. He's paying attention. Like the video. Boom. There we go. Caught. Guys, why are people talking about internet cafes, man? Look, do you guys think Revelation 1992 is genuinely insane? I think there's there's some possibility of that. Yeah. There's like legitimate insanity here, I think. Yeah. Can we listen to Wooden Potatoes again? Man, I would love to talk to Wooden Potatoes on Tea Time, but I think he's probably too busy. Chat about Guild Wars 3. I thought did. New Wooden Potatoes is God level, to be honest. Like, when I think of Wooden Potatoes, New Wooden Potatoes, I think of God Emperor. Full God Emperor. Okay, what have we got here? Okay. Uh, Dawn of the... In wait, what the... Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, wait, what is this? Dawn of the Infinite, Galacron's Fall, in progress... Pull 15 Iridochron. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. We've we've died to Iridochron, I guess. Um, what the hell is going on here? We the, the Rogue is 276k DPS. What the fuck is this? Okay. Interesting. We love to see it. They were ZDPS. Yeah, this is this is definitely a ZDPS moment, that's for sure. And uh, Elemental Shaman, very based. And then Havoc Demon Hunter. The Havoc was perma-dead. Well, I mean, at least you timed it. So, I mean, I guess there is that. How many deaths? 
Uh, cataclysmic obliteration. Not ideal. We actually did you time this. Wait, like, if you got one shot at 30-22? Then yeah, there's no way you timed it actually. Holy shit. Yeah, that's uh, that's not looking good. Ah, Volcross Mythic. Let's take a look at the finished logs. Ah, Lound the top DPS. Fury Warrior. Very nice. Multiple Grey Parsers. We have Grey Parsers here, guys. What's this with uh, Laradar? Look, guys, these guys actually fucking died to Laradar, man. That's crazy. That's actually insane. Look at this shit. Nimue. Weaver of the Dream Cycle. Very nice. Big DPS. Um, yeah. The enhanced Ellie Shaman Hero Town will be on the level of Rider of the Apocalypse and Cause. I like that, actually. Do you look- wait, look at deaths on Naru? Wait, let's take a look at this. Deaths. <laughs> oh dear. Looks like Vivi is dead. Vivi died to some plants. Null Root Tortured Scream, 81,000, 112,000. And then the Tainted Lasher, Shadow Spines, 160k. He died over four seconds, only death. Vivaloof dies from Null Root's Tortured Scream. The Dark Garden must feed. Let's have a look at Agira. A couple of deaths here on Agira as well, guys. DPS, 99 pars from Loundy, very nice. Very, very nice. Incredible. Were you getting PI'd? That's the question. Like, why Why are the priests not PI'ing you? I guess there's only one priest. Unlucky. Only one PI for the uh, paladin available. Yeah. There was a language barrier situation. I may have solo tanked. Oh, I see. So you had all the juice then. Do they have the, uh, the hunter? Uh, yeah, they have a survival hunter doing 240k DPS. Scrapper or Herald for PvE content? Uh, I'd say, I mean, they're both fun. Herald's better. Uh, Scrapper's fun, though. But, yeah, Herald is, uh... Herald is giga good. Like, it's, uh, definitely a good choice. Good choice if you like winning, that's for sure. Very high tier. Bro, World Boss was fucking dead. I'm out of here. Till the soil. With blood. Pretty intense stuff. When are you guys playing SOD? That's what I want to know. SOD hype? SOD hype? Yeah. Season of Drow? But guys, it's not Season of Drow, guys. It's fucking bullshit. You guys think it's Season of Drow, but it's Season of Energy. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. You know what's going to be funny, though? Jess is saying SOD hype, SOD hype. He's going to get in the raid on Saturday. And you know what's going to happen, guys? He's going to be doing, like, 100 DPS. Maybe even less than 100 DPS. It's going to be ridiculous. He will pause gray. Boom. That's for sure. I'm deep prot. Uh, I don't think... I, I, D, I mean... Do you play deep prot? I don't know. I don't know about that, to be honest. Maybe with gladiator stance it's going to be good, but... I'm not sure. I'll have to see what the nerds are thinking. The problem is you can't really do... F I mean, I guess Fury is playable. But, I don't know. It's it's a bit... Warrior's a bit scuffed until 60, to be honest. Like, Warrior will be really good at 60. Doesn't Gladiator mean you'll deal less threat? Yeah, but you can compensate for that by having a Shaman put Alpha on you. So you'll still be fine, I think. Because, like, um, yeah, it's, you can do that. Aren't good enough for damage uh, or mitigation. I mean, Warrior's plate and has shield and has shield block. You'll be fine, I think. It depends. I don't know. I haven't. I don't. I haven't really looked at like the warrior theory craft. Um, what people are doing. I think warrior is in a really weird spot. The problem is all uh, tanking in phase three is going to be weird because they've kind of nerfed tank DPS a lot, but like DPS DPS is going to go up insanely. It's like threat is going to be pretty weird. I think in uh, the next phase, it's probably it'll be okay. I think, but we'll see. 
We'll see how it is. My aim is to pass zero. Pill quitting for a 10 plus year uh, off game. Guild Wars 3 will be cancelled. Well, I mean, it could be. Like, you know, th th this is why it really sucks that this news came out this early, right? Uh, because it's at the stage where they're not confident. Because look, when it comes to development, guys, this is how it goes, right? What happens is you... Uh, what happens is, is that you develop something and then eventually it's it goes gold, right? And you know that it's going to be released. Like, you, you know, one way or the other, this game is coming out. Um, and that's just not where Guild Wars 3 is right now. It really sucks that it's kind of uh, in the public domain already. Not ideal. Not ideal whatsoever for uh, our friends at ArenaNet. Would you play Guild Wars 3 even if Guild Wars 2 is uh, more fun, more better than Guild Wars 2? I mean, look, no bullshit, guys. Like, uh, playing Guild Wars 3 when it comes out is going to be unbelievably financially beneficial for me. So I'm obviously going to play it, like at least a little bit, but I mean, if the game sucks, then I won't keep playing it, yeah, like, obviously, I, I, I'll eventually, I'll eventually not play it. But it's the same reason, guys, that, you know, do not worry, I can guarantee you I'll be playing the next Guild Wars 2 expansion, uh, because, I don't know, that's how I'm going to be paying for my next computer. So I need a new PC, guys. My current PC is actually dying. It's quite funny. It could break any moment. Can it hold on? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. What setup are you getting? Um, I don't know. It's probably going to be some uh, Ryzen bullshit, you know, like the, the X3D Ryzen stuff. It depends what I'm going to buy. I'm not sure if I'm buying this year or not. I might. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I need, I need some money. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Uh, it, it will live on. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, it is. It, you know, it's it's limping on. It's limping on. It is. It is. Yeah. How's Gilsu doing uh, nowadays in player base? Outside of PvP, it's good. Uh, PvP is the only game mode that has like actual population issues, and it, it does have actual population issues. Do you fear that even though you're being transparent with your relationship with Gilsu, there's many people who watch you eventually stop watching you because you're uh, playing the game uh, for uh, for money? Well, I mean, if, if, peop if people have that level of a shallow analysis of what's going on there, then, to be honest, I don't really want them watching me, right? Um, like, it's possible to have more than one motivation. Like, you know, like, one, uh, I can want to play the game. I think the game is interesting and like talking about the game. But I can also acknowledge the fact that, yeah, there is a huge financial incentive for me to also play the game. Like, both those statements can be true at the same time. They don't negate one or the other. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Like, for example, um, you know, it, uh, I, I like programming, right? Okay, I, I like development. But, you know, would the developers at ArenaNet still make Guild Wars 2 if they weren't getting paid? Probably not, right? Because they wouldn't be getting paid. Uh, so it's like, it's the best of both worlds, right? Like, I think that, you know, you look at someone like Roy or CMC or Grouch, right? They love making video games. They want to make video games. But at the end of the day, they're getting paid to do it, right? Like, you know, that is, that is the reality uh, of the situation, right? Yeah. And yeah. Oh, I'm going to bullshit you guys. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Love to do it if money was an issue, of course, yeah. That's uh, it's the nature of how these things tend to go. Incorporate PvP inside World vs. World, like an opt-in 5v5 skirmish to keep your reward system, also PvP leaderboards. Yeah, I mean, that's there's some potential there. You mean, that's kind of like looking at GVG a little bit, yeah. Yes. Might just incentivize the effort. Well, I think people set, tend to forget that being a streamer is a, is a job, or it's a potential job anyway. Like, it can be a hobby, but can it also be a job? Like, streaming is very high effort. Uh, or it can be. It doesn't have to be, but it, it can be very high effort, you know? Like, if I'm going to go live and basically talk every day for, like, five to seven hours straight, you know, 
you know, that's somewhat similar to, you know, being a radio broadcaster or something like that, right? You know, just talking to people for a long time, doing my best to hopefully be vaguely entertaining uh, for you know, every day. It's, it's tough. Streaming is the hardest job in the world. I mean, streaming is, um, you know, streaming is in, in some ways very easy, in some ways very hard, uh, to be honest. It kind of depends what you mean by that. It's, uh, saying like what's a hard job is a very uh, nebulous term, I think. You're great. I am great. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Half a three or Guild Wars three? Which one is possible? I mean, both are possible. No, like they're they're both on the table. They're both on the table. The hardest part about streaming is being awkward. Yeah, but then you learn to just not be awkward. Uh, to be honest. Like, you know, um, uh, definitely, uh, uh, I think that socially awkward would definitely have been a very accurate descriptor for me throughout most of my life. But then I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. So I learned and I changed myself because I didn't like it. So I changed it. Yeah. Let's go. And yeah, that is true. I think in some sense, some of the awkwardness can make people very relatable as well. No beard, yeah. Early days, couldn't grow a beard, man. That was uh, kicked in until it uh, didn't kick in for a while. As proper baby face for uh, the early streaming days. Let's go. I played Ragnarok, Guild Wars 1, Decaron slash Two Moons, Ragnarok 1, MU Online, RF Online, Ran Online, Rift Online. I like how he put RF Online twice there. Lineage 1, Perfect World, Age of Wushu, uh, Granados Sparta, Cabal 1, Dragon's Nest. Well, there you go. I mean, now we know. Now we know what games were played. Yeah. Nice. I played Dota 1 and Dota 2 for 15 years. Why are you still playing this dead piece of software? I'm already installing Guild Wars 3 beta build. Nice. Incredible. When are you leaking it to me? Leak me the beta build. Do it. It's time. It's time. Would stream be a full under if you took a lot of collaboration and spam a lot of advertising? Um, if I basically took every sponsor that I got an offer for, I would make a lot of money. Yeah. It would be very profitable to do that, actually. Uh, let me check my emails right now. Hang on. Hey, Mighty Teapot. Star Trek Fleet Command wants to sponsor you. Join their campaign to earn up to $2,409. And I have fucking a shit ton of stuff like this. I get spammed with this constantly. Unfortunately, it's always for basically pay to win dog shit mobile games, but it is what it is. So unlucky. Take it. Oh man, this is this is actually a little bit slimy. Holy shit! Uh, for this one, um, they'll actually give you money to spend on the in-game store. That's actually kind of interesting. If you buy their microtransactions on stream, they will refund you plus extra money. Interesting. Ah, Vivi raid. Very nice. Very good. 
French raid. Are you not supposed to keep this a secret? I mean, probably not. I don't give a shit. Fuck it. I'll leak it all. I didn't sign shit. <laughs> they just sent me the email. I didn't sign anything. Yeah. French don't raid, they run. <laughs> There's crypto gambling sites do. I mean, probably, yeah, something like that. They probably let people gamble on funny money a little bit. Yeah, I'm dead. It's over. Oh, maybe I can rally, though. I did rally. Huge. Did you watch your 10-year streaming anniversary yet? Uh, I don't think so, no. I think it's more like uh, seven or eight years. Let's see, what else have I got, guys? Like, I, I can go over some stuff here. What is? What the fuck is Warpath? Promote Warpath for 2,900. Wait, what the fuck is this? Marvel Strike Force for up to 7,555. Puzzles and Survival for 5.3k. Call of Dragons, 6.7k. Dude, lower budget on this one. Ant Legion for the Swarm, 1.7k. Sea of Conquest, 9.4k. Uh, ceiling on that. Dude, what is the fucking... What is, what is this shit? How is it 9.4k? The hell is this? Incredible. Ah, uh, this one's pretty hard to do. It would involve you guys, like, wailing on MTX a little bit. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, this is like a, yeah, it's like a giga pay-to-win, like, mobile game. Like, you know, thingy. But seriously, this is how ridiculous it is, guys. It's a 9.4k payout for a two-hour stream, basically. It's also mobile only. The fuck is that? That's crazy. Mobile only. Insane. Nice. But yeah, that's the kind of deals that you get uh, as a as a streamer. That's basically what's going on. And the thing is, they're they're all garbage, right? Like all of the sponsors, they're always trash. Um, unfortunately, they're always garb, which feels pretty bad. But it is what it is. Uh, definitely been nine years. Yeah, that sounds about right. You can do HelloFresh. Oh, uh, yeah, I think there is a HelloFresh deal here, actually. Can I probably degen use those to get rich? Yeah, if you wanted to, yeah. For sure. I wouldn't even call it degen. I mean, look, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I don't think there's anything uh, inherently wrong with it at the end of the day. Ah, oh, yeah, here you go. HelloFresh. Okay, here we go. Uh, this deal is actually quite bad. Oh yeah, this is very bad actually. This is the problem. Like, actual good companies can't give you as good of a deal. So, here's how it works with HelloFresh. Um, the base rate for HelloFresh is $750, which is, you know, not super high, obviously. Um, but the thing is, here, the way you earn most of this is if exactly someone from the UK um, subscribes. So basically, for every person who subscribes on HelloFresh, who is exactly from the United Kingdom, um, is 40 extra dollars. So yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is.
So I need to convince 60 UK viewers to subscribe to HelloFresh. And yeah, Sneb is here. Is that an ad for Shark VPN? No, that's HelloFresh. Yeah, truth is, guys, I don't um, have the VPN, so I got rid of it because I don't, I don't, I don't like sponsorships. I don't like it. I'm, I'm kind of fundamentally opposed. It's I. If I really needed the money, I would do it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I fundamentally don't like sponsorships. I, I don't like it. Uh, what are most of your viewers? Uh, it's. Well, I mean, USA and Europe, really, but it's pretty widely spread, actually. Number one demographic is actually United States. Um, and then it's, uh, it's like, Germany, I think, and the UK and stuff like that. Isn't being in a reading uh, partner sponsorship? Nope. I don't, get, uh, I don't get paid to play the game. I wish. But that's not the case. I'm getting out of here. Let's go. Yeah. Fellow UK. Ah, very nice. You want to know what streamers gambling about publisher? I don't even know what that means. What does it even mean? What's going on? Uh, and it will sponsor you being a WoW streamer. True stonks, right? There's enough time for it. Honestly, I just gotta go for the double dip, right? I gotta go for the double dip here. I get sponsored to play Guild Wars 2 by ArenaNet because I play WoW, and I get sponsored to play WoW by Blizzard because I play Guild Wars 2. It's gonna be good. The ultimate double dip, guys. That's what needs to happen. Wait, I wonder if I could actually leech Dragon's End because it is going on right now. Oh, no. Never mind. I'm just gonna zone into the map and see what happens. It will probably do tea time about Guild Wars 3, yeah. All that kind of stuff. It will exist. Yeah, let's attempt Dragon's End Leech. Just ended. Unlucky. I cannot leech. Leeching failed. I am a failed leech, guys. You hate to see it. Yeah. All right, what are we doing here? Um, oh, Leviathan. Try do it yourself, or if not in the mood for jumping, teleport to me. <laughs> I like this guy. That's high energy, actually. That's pretty high tier. I'll give you that. When you leech Auric Basin with 1,000 accounts. Look, that's how it's done. Wait, Sneb's calling. Calling the goose. Yo, Sneb, what's going on? Yo. Whoa. Yo. I thought I could hear my own voice. Could you wait? Weird. Oh, maybe okay. maybe on no, the stream. the echo in the room again. Oh, yeah, it could be the oh, echo. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> it's snap time, Weird. guys. I still gotta fix that. Hello. Snap okay, time begins. I was just reading the comments, and uh, yeah, why is everyone like? Why did you? Why did you challenge the combat system when you should have challenged if it would be an MMO? Didn't I? Didn't we talk about how we don't even know if it's going to be an MMO? But I look. It's pretty safe to think that if it's going to be another, like, if they call it Guild Wars 3, that it's probably oh, yeah, going to be, be an MMO. MMO. Yeah, I, to be honest, like, I, I, don't, I think... All, that, all those people are just insanity if yeah. they think that the game would be called Guild Wars 3 and MMO. wouldn't be an MMO. Yeah, that would be, it would be if ridiculous. It, if it wasn't an MMO, you just would, you could keep it in the Guild Wars universe, yeah. you just wouldn't call it Guild Wars exactly. 3. Exactly. That would it be makes, very confusing. It makes absolutely no sense, to be honest. It does not make sense. Yeah, and all the, I like how people are getting like upset. I, I actually enjoy that. I, I hope they get upset by it. That I that I thought that uh, it probably like they could move away from it being combat focused. I hope that people are riled up about that because it's just true. Look at look at the data, people. Look at the stats mm. in the game where the people that are really focused on the combat. And when I say that, what I mean is like engaging with it in in like a performance kind of way so if just look at the discrepancy in damage i mean they would probably just simplify combat down in some way you know i, do that, right? I kind of interacted in a in a thread 
uh, a Twitter thread about this relatively recently, and this is going to be a complete... Um, this is going to be a complete diversion from this conversation, in a sense, but... Um, what are your thoughts on basically solving that issue with difficulty modes instead? Because this is what WoW does. Um, WoW, I would actually argue, is more complicated to play than Guild Wars 2. In fact, it, 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 it is. It absolutely is. And to the point of being, to be frank, a little bit overcomplicated, I think, in, in a lot of ways. Um, uh, to be honest, it's, it's a bit much, I think, especially on certain classes. With how, like, the rotations work and how... Um, how, like, all of the abilities and uh, talents interact and stuff like this. But, hey, I, like, this is an opinion that I have that I, I, I have become more confident in this opinion over time. Does it really matter that the game is very complicated for the vast majority of players? Because this is my read on the situation. I feel like, yeah, Guild Wars 2 is really complicated, WoW is really complicated, blah, 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 blah. But do you not think that, like, the average player is like, yo, I just cast a giant fireball, this is sick. They're, they're not like, oh, oh, this rotation is so hard, Snab, oh, oh my god, I'm, I'm not doing enough DPS, oh my god. I just think they're going, yo... I just summoned a giant meteor. This is cool. I'm fighting a giant octovine or a giant bug. This is hype. I think that that's how most people engage with the game. And I think that's very much how it is in WoW. Like, WoW is hard. WoW is difficult to play correctly. You will absolutely see people who are doing ZDPS in that game in a similarly extreme way, honestly. Uh, to Guild Wars 2, like, you will 100% people see people doing, like, 20% of how much DPS they should be doing. Like, especially if you go in, like, the easier content. But the game just makes it so that doesn't really matter. And I feel it's kind of the same with Open World. Like, that's what Guild Wars 2 does. It basically says, well, yeah, we know you guys don't really understand the game very well, but fuck it. Okay, it's still gonna look cool and pressing the buttons is gonna be fun. Because that's, I, I, I think that's kind of, like, the solution. I'm not sure if you necessarily need to streamline the game down because you just make it so that it doesn't matter in a sense right like that's the uh that's the situation yeah this yeah i mean i i don't necessarily disagree but the the way that i would challenge that is i would go why bother making a very complicated system of combat if less than 0.5 percent of people are going to engage with it because I think that system can still be fun to play, even if players don't learn the intricacies of it. I don't disagree, but I'm thinking purely from an economical standpoint. Mm. What's the ROI of them going to all these lengths to balance a, a challenging combat system that's extremely robust and complex and intricate, interesting, and then for what? For like 500 people to engage with it and I, I don't know I don't I don't really see it right I don't I don't see the ROI mm. um, and that's coming from somebody who does enjoy that stuff I just question like I I look at Guild Wars 2 and one of my personal mantras about the game for a long time has been man it just feels like there's all this missed potential with the combat system but over time i've also realized that it's it's not necessarily about that like you have to kind of reframe it it's they could make a bunch of stuff that no one will play but why would they do that i mean sarah cm is is cool and awesome i like right now i'm progging it with my group i think it's freaking hard like I, I don't know if i'll get it right i hope i will i'm determined to do my best to try but there's also the the chance that i'm um that we've just like go on forever and then peter out and uh i think there's some stats on reddit somebody pulled that it was like under a thousand people have gotten to 40 or 50 percent i think and that is interesting because do you make the game for 500 people? I don't know. Well, I think that's why difficulty settings come into play, right? 
Well, yeah, but like if you're making a new game, like we have to think about this in a different context. If you're making a brand new game, you need to decide who it's for. And one of the things that's plagued Guild Wars 2 for a long time is that, and you said this yesterday, I think even some like prior devs had said it. Um, one of the things that plagues Guild Wars 2 is that they just, they, they do a little bit of everything, but they don't necessarily pick a couple things and do them like extremely, extremely well. Uh, you can argue that open world, I think open world is quite good in Guild Wars 2, but they, they've kind of spread themselves out pretty thin with mm -hmm. world versus world, PvP, open world, instance content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, That's right? Pretty. There's just a lot going on. And so if you're creating an entirely new game, unless you want your, your development cycle to be a billion years, you need to consider what the priorities are. And when you look at Guild Wars 2 and what's popular, I'm not sure that instance content is where Guild Wars 2 is most popular. I think instance content is great in Guild Wars 2. Like, I think it's really nice, but the, the development or the, the cadence of content release is pretty slow. At some point, you have to consider, are they, like, how much do they invest in those things? And I'm not even saying that they just don't have them at all. I'm just wondering, when it comes to the combat system and stuff, if that's not something that people generally care as much about, like they like the fluidity of it and, and whatever, I'm, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about simply, like, the, the depth of attributes and all of those things. If those are things that people care less about and they care more about like their interaction with the world and how their character moves through the combats and engages with the landscape around them. Should they not focus more on those things rather than simply um, making it so that there's a billion attributes and stats and, and things that maybe people won't engage with as much? I mean, I could definitely see them streamlining that. Like, are there too many attributes in this game? Probably, yeah. Um... For sure. I think there's a lot of... Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm really work. getting at. I, like, like, I, that down I see sure. it getting scaled down a lot. Yeah, I can see them scaling it down a fair bit, yeah. And they probably wouldn't want to, um, you know, make the game as spammy as it is right now. And they, they, I mean, they wouldn't go the same way with boons, that's for sure. Like, uh, boons got really messed up, especially in PvE. It's kind of okay in, uh, you know, it's kind of okay in... Uh, PvP in World vs. World, mm, arguably not so much in World vs. World, but, you know, it's it's alright. Have to care to different people at different yeah, skill that's... levels? Well, th th do they, though, actually? Like, Sneb's point here is very much like, um, why not make, um, why not make a game that isn't really, um, why try to cater to a very small amount of, uh, of, of good players, basically, <laughs> who want that, that that experience right basically Damn. like that's the thing yeah, exactly. um that, that's the uh, the thing yeah at, at what point does does it break at what point do you go uh i don't know if it's worth investing a lot of time and money and effort into something that's only for a few people you do have to you do have to consider that because because effectively if you go really hard on combat and instance content you're like okay who are you competing against you're competing against final fantasy and world of warcraft and uh, I had people that I tried to get for Sarah CM, for example, um, several people, and they just said, you know, I'm kind of done with the game at this point because it's been too long and like Sarah's looks fun and whatever, but I'm going to beat Sarah's at some point and there's nothing to do then. But in Final Fantasy or World of Warcraft, there are a hundred fights like Sarah CM. So why would I invest in this? And, and this is, that's important to consider when you're making a new game because you're going to be against these big players. How much are you willing to invest in these things? And if the answer is not very much, then at what point do you just go, maybe we shouldn't market the game that way. Maybe the game should be marketed to our dominant demographic. Maybe we, this is, maybe we still make some of that stuff, but it's like a complete aside, but I guess you kind of see what I'm saying with this. Like, I I would be very cautious about about making too many promises in a new game that, uh, you know, that would end up making it just a repeat of what happened with Guild Wars 2, which is being very spread out. A lot of things. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what you're asking here is uh, what what's the target demographic of the game going to be? Like, and how wide is that target demographic going to be? Is it going to be more focused than Guild Wars 2? Um, and I think I would agree with you. I think they probably will make it a bit more of a narrow 
um, target demographic. I think that was probably... I think I'd agree with you that it was one of the things that probably hurt Guild Wars 2 more than helped, to be honest. Um, was trying to basically do everything. Like, if you look at the history of the game, guys, like, uh, Guild Wars 2 has struggled to maintain all of its different game modes. It's done a... It's really struggled with that. Like, you know, PvP was completely abandoned. World vs. World was completely abandoned. Raids were completely abandoned. Um, fractals were completely abandoned as well um, for a long period of time. Like, it's it's definitely something that has struggled. Like, and you, you have to kind of think, right? Like, how would the game look if they just purely focused on just open world PvE and just world versus world? Like, what would the game have looked like if that had happened, right? So I think you're, you are right. I think we could definitely see a slightly different strategy um, when it comes to, like, how they end up uh, kind of pushing the game, right? And what type of content they release and what they want to develop. Somebody in the chat rose a good point. Why make another MMO at all? I, in some ways, that's a really good question, right? Because if they do make another MMO, they have to be very specific with who they're trying to target because uh, maybe it's just my opinion. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like MMOs are becoming more and more niche, right? Like people, people only play... M I don't think there's a lot of new people getting into MMOs, right? I think the funnel is very... Uh, isn't very wide at the top, <laughs> you know? I, I, I think it's a pretty niche type of game at this point. Where at one point it was um, like the game type, but then now you have like MOBAs and other games that are easier to jump in and jump out of. I think less people play the really long-term investment games. Would you agree with that? Or do you think that's off base? Um, I, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think there are actually a surprising amount of Zoomers that play um, MMOs. Especially, I feel like um, Zoomers do actually quite like stuff like RuneScape and maybe Retail WoW as well, I think. like they're, I think they're surprisingly popular there with Zoomers. But yeah, I do agree that it's certainly a, a much more niche title than it used to be. Like, yeah, like the the really big games are the... It's certainly not MMOs for sure. But I, th I think there are actually yeah. like some new players that, that do kind of get into them. Especially the more modern MMOs. Like the more modern MMOs, they typically, you know, they, they are much more similar to the modern gaming experience. Like very jump in, jump out. I think uh, Retail WoW is a really good example of this. It's very much, okay, go do a dungeon and it takes you like 20 minutes and then you can just fuck off and you've made progress, right? Kind of like, I'd say Guild Wars 2 is similar in that regard. I think the Guild Wars 2 demographic, I think the Guild Wars 2 demographic is actually very interesting because I think it's not Zoomers. I think it's almost entirely older gamers actually because the game is um, not very intense, basically. It's a, it's a low intensity game, okay? People like low intensity builds. Guild Wars 2 is a low intensity game. Uh, so it's kind of like for, for people who I think are kind of done with the, you know, the really crazy intense MMOs that are out there, like a lot of the other stuff, the, the you know, the big grind, the big difficulty, right? All that kind of stuff. Um, and Guild Wars 2 is kind of like, you know, where you end up after, you fed up, you, you, after you're done with that, basically. Yeah. Yeah. My fear is the game will be focused on open world casual, will separate the player base. I mean, realistically that it will almost certainly be focused a lot more on that. I would expect them to trim down their game modes rather than maintain what they have here. I don't think it's been a very good strategy for them to try and maintain all of this. It hasn't worked um, particularly well, to be honest. So yeah, I, I think they probably will trim it down. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I think that doesn't mean that they'll necessarily make the, the combat system... I think they'll probably make it simpler, but simple doesn't mean easier or less nuanced, right? Uh, I, I, yeah, I think I've done a terrible job explaining this. Mm. That's really the problem. When I say combat system, what I really mean is the complexity of things like traits, attributes, runes. I don't mean the way that people move or anything like that. Um, but I even think that rotations and such would probably be simplified to some extent because the discrepancy between damage in the game is very, very high. Yes, you could probably solve that with some difficulty levels to some extent, but the question would be, why would you go to all of that extra effort when you could just simplify the system um, to serve your dominant demographic anyway? Hmm. Well, the thing is, is I would say that um, you will always have that discrepancy, to be honest, in any game where skill is relevant. Um, and... 
for like for example, I like New World is. I feel like New World is kind of what you're talking about. It's a much more streamlined system, but I guarantee you the the discrepancy in performance between players in that game is absolutely massive. Like I, I guess the gearing's a bit complicated in that game, but. Ultimately, I think that even games that are very simple are going to have huge discrepancies in player performance in terms of output. Because you can't balance around skill, really. Like you, you can't do that. The only way to balance around skill is to make skill not important. I think that's quite undesirable, I think. Um, you know, for, for most games, I think. Yeah, well, um, I mean, that kind of exists in Guild Wars 2 to some extent, yeah. right? But yeah, they, no, They've I, tried yeah. to power creep it to oblivion so that some things don't matter. Um, yeah, and no, I think the discrepancy in... Uh, they, I've, been, I've been very wow-pilled on this. Because people always say, oh yeah, wow is easy. W wow is not easy, actually. Uh, it is extremely easy to be fucking terrible at that game. Uh, in fact, in some ways, it's it's easier to be bad at WoW than it is at Guild Wars 2 in some respects. Like, the, the game will fuck you. Like, if you don't if you don't learn, you will be punished absolutely mercilessly, um, to be honest, in that game. Like, more so than in Guild Wars, I think. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I think this I think is a good conversation. I think reducing. I just I feel a little stuck. <laughs> well, I, I I think one thing that um I think you're getting at is reducing the number of systems would be something they would. Yeah, do. Yeah, that's. And I think that's. Yeah, I'm I'm having a hard time articulating yeah. exactly what I mean, but yeah, I think I think you're getting there. I I just think there's too much bloat. There's just too much mm. crap in trying to help people. Like, if you want to get good at Guild Wars 2, you have to wade through a million systems. Like, okay, you want to get good at Guild Wars 2? Well, you got to understand, like, how all your settings work and be able to about face and do all that. But, you know, not only that, now you need to be able to understand what all of the stats do and how they impact each other. And then, oh, yeah, the gear, like, they all have different names, like, three different names, the same kind of gear. And you got to know that you can get some only in this expansion. And you see where I'm going with this? It's just like the systems on top of systems on top of systems. And the and these things just compound each other to the point where the game is quite complicated. If you're saying that the game is simple, I think that just shows that you're probably a good player because you have figured it out and now it's simple to you. But if you are a new player to Guild Wars 2, which I've talked to many and tried to help them get into raids and whatever. This game is not easy to understand. It is complicated. It is, it is deceptive because I might tell someone, um, hey, I need you to go make the Condi Virtuoso build. And then they make it an exotic armor and their stats are off. And they didn't fully understand that they needed to crit cap. They didn't really understand why that was important. And they didn't understand how the stats connected with their gear, with their and the importance of infusions and like there's it's like you're playing a mini math game sometimes and when you take that into account that's a lot to ask of a player to learn um it's it's just a lot now not everyone's going to do that not everyone needs to do that because not all the content even requires that but at the end of the day most players don't engage with it in that way you have players that have played thousands of hours that don't have a freaking back piece on or that have a, a blue amulet or some crap like that. So I feel like what I said makes a lot of sense. Like, wouldn't you want to just simplify these things so that that's not even something that people need to consider? Um, no. Uh, I, I would say the correct solution to that is actually difficulty settings because that exact same thing will happen in World of Warcraft, but it just doesn't matter because you're playing LFR and you're fighting a giant dragon, but it's LFR difficulty, so it doesn't matter. So basically a player like that can have a really good time in World of Warcraft and it's not really that important. And it's the same with... um. It's the same actually with everything. Like for example, if you go into like a high key, like, if you do that and you go into like a plus 20 key, you'll probably have a very rough time and get destroyed. But if you go into a plus two, you'll go, holy shit, this is cool. I'm blasting and we're, we're doing this dungeon and we timed it, this is hype. So it's, I think this is why difficulty settings are so important because they, I think they actually, they, they prevent the Guild Wars 2 situation. Because the Guild Wars 2 situation is that if you don't understand the game, you will basically get locked out and you're uh, you're kind of unable to participate in some way. Whereas I feel like in a lot of other MMOs, that actually doesn't happen. Like, even if you don't understand the game, it kind of doesn't matter, right? You're not going to get locked out of content or like be unable to participate uh, because you don't understand the game. So I think that um, like having having depth, I think, and, and you know what? The, the, I feel like this. I think you're gonna hate this. I, I'm gonna say something that's gonna make you mad. Um, I think 
that players like playing around with systems like that and it's a fun part of the experience even if they don't understand them. So I think that players love messing around with gear and equipping runes and, you know, getting a new relic or using a new weapon or getting a new item and using it, even if they have no idea what the systems mean, right? And what the numbers mean. Yeah, I 100% I think, agree with you. I think it's 100%. fun. I think players like messing around with that, even if they don't understand it. I know that yeah, sounds this, like... This yeah. isn't a knock on Buildcraft or anything. This, this yeah. is simply that there are two many systems there are too mm. many yeah um, and it makes it so I that at some them, point yeah. that fun be it converts mm. into frustration yeah they're like oh man i was having fun but now i'm pissed off because i just can't figure it out i and mean yeah. I, I think we can avoid that by just reducing the systems yeah, yeah. i think that reducing and the number of stats will be <clears> good <throat> i would say that um getting rid of the infusion concept will be really good uh, relic. Yeah. I mean, Infusion's stupid. Agony, stupid. Um, there's, there's like a whole, there's a whole bunch of things. I'd probably get rid of runes like, too. Uh, now that we, I think I just have relics and oh, not have runes. Oh yeah. yeah. Finally, you're on board with this. Yeah. Teapot. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody remember when I said that relics were stupid because it just added another level of complexity to gearing? Yes. It is not good because uh, it's good in some ways, but it's very bad in other ways because now it's even more confusing to gear something in Guild Wars 2. Oh, this rune only comes from this expansion or this thing or whatever. Oh, you can get it in like three different ways. You can buy some on the TP, you can't others. Oh, relics, some you have to unlock, some you can just buy on the TP. Look, what are we doing here? You're just making it so complicated for somebody to play the game um, at the end level or for even somebody who just wants to mess around to mess around with it. If somebody wants to mess around, they have to go and do like 10 different achievements to figure out where all the, the stuff is. I don't know, man. I don't like that stuff. I think it's just a little bit too much. It's just, if I were to go back and have a say, I actually would have, instead of adding a relic, or I would have added, the, adding the relic could have been okay, but I would have gotten rid of the six runes thing and I would have just made one rune. Mm. You only need one rune to get the six bonuses. Because realistically, how <clears throat> how many builds don't just use... Yeah, no, the, uh, the, the, the rune picks. system is essentially massively over-designed because the original design was that exactly. you... you it, the, the original thing is that you'd mix and match, but they, they said... So, in fact, do you know who said uh, they didn't want to do that, Sneb? You know mm. who started um, changing the game so uh, mixing and matching would never happen? I think a lot of people in the chat will know that's right, the God Emperor changed that he didn't like uh, that it was solar interesting yeah. yeah i would i would remove runes and infusions from armor pieces and put them as their own slots and if you must have had relics i would have had that have its own slot too that's how i would have tried to simplify things because i think a lot of times people actually don't have six runes on and stuff or they forget to have a lot of the i think it's just confusing Relic, you don't slot into armor. Infusions, you do slot into armor, but some infusions do different things, and <laughs> like it's, it's just a lot. Um, oh, and then to make it even more complicated, if you do end up getting legendary armor, uh, infusions have no legendary component. So this means that you need to have, you need to like toss infusions back and forth on characters, or you need to have a lot of infusions. It's a lot to think about. That's really all that matters is it's a lot to think about, especially if you're a new player. If I was making Guild Wars 3 and I was thinking about combat and I had in mind that certain kinds of people play the game and those people don't necessarily, they, they like some complexity, but not maybe the total amount of complexity, I would just remove some of the complexity without destroying the integrity of the game. Boom. There it is. There it is. Yeah, no, I'd agree. I'd definitely trim it down uh, a lot. There's a lot of bloat that's entered Guild Wars 2 over the years that probably shouldn't exist. And they also need to have UI customization. That's reality. Yeah. Yeah. Because the UI in this game sucks. That's a hard reality, guys, but it's true. The UI in this game, it's very, very pretty, but it's not very functional. Um, not good. At a DPS meter. 
Well, I mean, I don't think any MMOs really have, like, in-game DPS moves. It's, it's almost always third party, but I think that, yeah, like, having a more open API would be good. You've got to be really careful with that. Like, for example, I would say that the API in Guild Wars 2 is actually really overpowered right now. If you see the stuff you can do with Blish, it's kind of broken, to be honest. It's more powerful than what you can do with Weak Auras in World of Warcraft, um, just, just for a comparison there. Um, so, yeah, like, you'd have to be careful with that. Like, you probably shouldn't be giving away, like, positional data, for example, um, in, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, positional data is probably not a good idea, but, you know. But I think UI customization yeah. is good in general. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't think you even need to have a DPS meter in the game. In some ways, maybe that would be good. But I think you just need to give people prompts about their performance. And you don't, you don't need to be like, wow, that was awful, <laughs> right? But you, you should probably be like, ah, you know, you perform better than X number of players. You just keep that private to each person. Um, like you, you rezzed more players than anyone else. And just give them like these little badges that so they take pride in, in like engaging. It doesn't even need to be all damaged or healing focus or boon output. It could be mechanics. It could it could be anything. But just keep people engaged. Um, yeah. I, my one of my biggest qualms with the game, as everybody knows, is I don't like playing with people who I don't think are playing with me. And I just don't think that's fun. And I know that a lot of people experience that in things like meta trains, where people show up and they, they just they effectively choose not to play. There's a big difference between, um, you know, you you're showing up to the events and you're just standing there mm. on purpose, and then there's or somebody that's you know maybe new and maybe not contributing as much because they're new. But I I dislike the the lat or the the former. I dislike it when people are are going out and, and choosing not to play with me. And we have incentivized that in Guild Wars 2 quite strongly, and I wish we wouldn't. Yeah. Leeches. Feels like I'm, uh, yeah. It feels like I am doing Nah, Blitch is not as powerful as like old weak or is that the really time. busted stuff. Those were pretty ridiculous, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. They were pretty unhinged. Yeah. yeah. Ban Group all projects. Well, you know, the thing about add-ons is that I think they can actually make the game better for new players um, rather than worse for new players. Like, some add-ons can be problematic, but I think add-ons in general just make it so that a new user can really customize their experience. Why? why okay, um, I'm going to pop off about this. Why do people care? Why, why, why do they care at all? Like, it, how does it affect them, really? Uh, because I, and, it, and I will have because my it, change. It, because it affects culture. Care. It affects culture. Um, like, if... Is it that people don't have to communicate? Because that I can kind of get behind, but it's the, if it's... The same reason why people don't like uh, meta builds, right? Because if people start playing meta builds, then if they don't play a meta build, they'll be excluded, right? Um, is the situation. It's the same thing. Um, which is, but which, by the way, I, I, is, a hard time which, that. by the way, is true. Like, if, if, um, if you don't use, uh, basically a, a, a good build, and it's, I wouldn't say meta build, because there's some, there's some baggage attached to that, but if you don't play a build that does something, you will be excluded. Uh, this is true in every MMO. Like, if you basically don't buy in to the, I guess it's like social contract almost. There's like a social contract in MMOs that if you're going to do, let, let's say, a raid, yeah. you're going to do PvP, you're going to use a good strategy. There's a bit of a social buy-in. And if you don't do that, yeah. you will be excluded um, from the community if you refuse to, to play play ball, basically. That's uh, Maybe this true. is unhinged, but I don't really see the problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it uh, yeah. turns out if you, if you go to a store with no shoes on, you may be excluded <laughs> from the store. Yeah. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, but you could open your own store where no one has to wear shoes. And then, and then people with no shoes would all come to your store. And that, that's fine. I, I don't know. I don't really see it as that big of a deal. Does it kind of suck that there are some builds that are just so bad that nobody wants to play with them? Yeah. But like, if you actively choose to play things that are really off meta, like, like near, nearly unplayable and other people don't want to play with that because you're essentially a detriment to the team. I don't really understand why you can complain. Mm. 
It's another thing if like you're playing Heal Alacrity Tempest and somebody's like, oh, that's not, you know, that's not Druid, so you can't do my wing one full clear with me. That That's a bit different. That also um, doesn't happen, by the way. Yeah, let, let, it, it really doesn't happen. That's not I a mean, thing. It, it might happen in like some very specific, if somebody's like doing a specific strategy or they, they want to practice in a certain way for a raid tournament, you know, something like that. That could make sense, but generally it doesn't happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Get I, I could be the unnamed uh, one. Honestly, like know. the whole add-ons, new players getting kicked, this is kind of a fantasy, to be honest. This doesn't even happen in World of Warcraft, by the way, like realistically. Like if you're going, if you're going into like a heroic run, nobody's going, oh shit, this guy doesn't have big wigs installed, kick him. Nobody is fucking doing that. Like, it, it, no, right? No. No, no. It, it's so weird, actually. Like, all of the anti-add-on and kind of anti-DPS meter and anti, like, kill-proof people, they're always chasing shadows. They're always fighting shadows. It's like a, this theoretical thing that just, just isn't real. Like, it just makes me think that anyone who says this has, like, never actually played the content, right? Like, or, or hasn't really got into it and just, like, thinks that's how it is. It's like an imaginary enemy, to be honest. Oh, well, I, I, well, it's, it's just perception, right? Um, perception is reality. I mean, I've spoken to a lot of people on social media where they're like, man, I hate raids. I've never added raids. Raids are the most toxic thing ever. And I go, what, are, what was your experience in raids? And they go, I've never actually played raids. Mm. And I'm like, well, then like, how can you say that? It's like, well, I've heard other people say it. It's like, okay, well, you know, maybe that person also just heard someone else say it and it's just Next being perpetuated is mindlessly. Yeah. You still with me? Don't have time for a bio break. Yes. How do you get better without having a chance to play the content? Well, fortunately, there's always like a good ground level. For example, you can start playing in other content and you work your way up, right? Like you start in the easiest bosses and the easiest content. You get confident with that. You improve your skills. You get better at playing your class and you move on. Like, yeah, that's exactly how you do it. Like, there's like a ladder of content in the game. This is true in all MMOs, especially ones that have difficulty settings. And you climb the ladder. And also, no, I actually, I, you know what? I would never normally make a statement like this uh, because it is unhinged. But I'm sorry, the idea that people are getting kicked for not having arc dps in guild wars 2 is actually hilarious like like there's, I, I, there's no happen. fucking way <laughs> there's just no way this happens i'm sorry well i, I guess it's, it's it could be kind of true look if you join a raid and you you have <laughs> yeah. sometimes people join raid groups and they've never been to the aerodrome and they're like how do i get in and you're like we were asking for experience you are going to get kicked and they're like it's because i didn't have arc dps isn't it <laughs> it's like no it's because you literally didn't read the thing and aren't following instructions like this is this is unhinged it's totally different so there might be some truth like if you don't have arc dps then you don't know how you're doing you are not measuring your performance you aren't you don't know so you said I need, wait, hang on a minute. You, you said I need to access X and read a ton to play a game for one hour a day. Okay, then honestly, then you don't want to raid. Um, okay, this is the reality. Uh, or you don't want to raid with most people. So let me tell you a secret, um, X Sync. Like the the people who you're trying to join a group for, they are people who are going to do that research and they are going to do that information. Because I'll tell you a secret. Like the type of player who does raids and MMOs and makes groups for raids and MMOs is the type of player who is going to put in effort and is going to learn about the game. It, why do you want to join a group full of people who don't want to play the game the same way as you? You're basically saying, well, I don't want to learn anything. I don't want to put any effort in. I don't want to do any kind of preparation or research, but I want to join a group full of people who do. Like, why would you want to join that group? I don't understand. Like, um, it doesn't make any sense uh, to me. Like, you're joining a group of people who want to put in effort, and you don't want to put in effort. So, I mean, of course they don't want you in your group. Yes, they don't want you. They don't want to play with you. There's a strong implication there, by the way, as yeah. well, about, yeah. about what kind of character you have if you do want to join a group and not do yeah. anything. Um, like, look, when we made the Sarah CM group in Skane Gang, 
I we just had like a list of kind of like what the values of the team would be and be like if you don't want to have these values then don't join and there's no hard feelings but this is what we're doing and and by the way it goes both ways I don't want somebody in there that's going to be like flaming out the team because we didn't hit like 200 extra DPS or something like there's there's like you get to choose the intensity level and we chose ours so um I don't know. I like I I genuinely don't understand that perspective at all. Why why would you ever want to be in a team that's just so incongruent with your own values? Yeah. Um if you want to make a group and you want to say we don't care about um you know preparation or like having the right build or anything. Uh, here's the question. Why don't you do that? Right? Like why do you think people don't do that. Why don't you do it? I mean, I guess that's a question that you can ask yourself. Maybe you can tell us the answer, right? Um, why are you so- in role play. Why, the... <laughs> why are you so insistent on joining someone else's group who doesn't want to play the game the same way you do? Like, that is a really big problem. Like, all of these players, they don't want to do the thing where they don't read websites. And maybe you go, wow, reading websites for a video? What a bunch of fucking losers. Hey, that's a valid opinion. You can have that opinion. There's nothing wrong with that. But then why are you trying to join their group? Right? Like, if you if you don't like the way they play, why do you want in? Um, I, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but that's the situation. Yeah, because they could say, yeah. well... Because I, um, when I make those groups, other people won't join them. Okay. Uh, look, th th this is this time and time again. This happens in Skein Gang. What I mean, we put ten people together, and they have um, kind of like a, a soft set of community values associated with that. But there's always a point where every team, th they get they get to this milestone where. Maybe, not all teams are like this, but maybe about half the team has been putting in a bit more effort than the other half. And the, the team that's been putting in a bit more effort, you know, maybe they're making the call outs, they're, they're organizing the spreadsheet, they're practicing their builds, whatever it is, they're putting in more effort. Can, effort can be denoted in many ways. And then one day they're like, huh, we're actually being held back by the other five people, but we like these other five people, but like we can't progress unless these other five people buy into this vision. And they ultimately have to have a chat and sometimes everybody gets on board and they find like a united vision of and goal of what they want to do. And then other times they amicably part ways mm. because you can't have both things. But, but the saddest part about this is the, so if, if they part ways, the five people that didn't want to put any effort in their team collapses because it turns out that in order to have a team, that each individual must put in effort. And, and so if, if no one on the team is putting in any effort, the team dies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's absolutely true. No one wants to join the groups where people won't put in effort because those teams don't last. Those teams don't win as often. Um, and, and this is hyperbolic, of course, right? Like there's people that join chill rounds and stuff. That's, that's fine. But there's still somebody in there putting in the effort to like make the group somewhat cohesive and do all of those things. If you're not willing to put in the effort, then you're, you are going to find fewer people that want to play. Because I think a lot of people, when they play a semi-competitive game mode, we'll call it because it's more end game or whatever, like raids or these, these challenging instance content, you're, you're only going to be successful if you're willing to try and put in the effort. And also, you you have said because I want to try what the um, game has to offer. Then you've got two options. You either um, play the game, and you you basically are willing to respect others' wishes and play the way that they want to play, or you make a group and you set the rules within that group. That's those are your choices for going about these things. Um, that's just the reality. And by the way, you're scapegoating add-ons for this, but I'm going to tell you a, a, a secret here. Even if there were no add-ons, even if there was no DPS meter, this would still happen no matter what. Um, like, if you don't play, um, 
the way that people want you to play, they're going to remove you from their group. And I'll flip this. Like, for example, would you be happy if someone joined your group and started saying, look guys, we need to do the optimal strategy. Look guys, we need to get the optimal builds and basically tried to change how you're playing, right? Like, would you be annoyed if someone did that? Of course you would. Yeah, obviously. Um, as Sneb said, it 100% cuts both ways. Like, let's imagine there's a blind progression group in a raid and I joined that group and I started telling them all the mechanics. That would be a dick move and I should be kicked from that group. That would be a very toxic thing to do, right? If I went into a group and started telling them all the strategies and all the optimal mechanics on how to, on how to beat the boss, that would be shitty. Um, in the same way, if you join a group and you say, I don't want to learn, I don't want to actually, you know, use good builds or use good strategies, in a group that is doing that, then you're the asshole, right? You're the person who's the problem there as well. Um, and also, um, you, you, something interesting here, like, would uh, Sweats play the game if they didn't have casuals to reign over? Absolutely. Like, there are a bunch of insecure losers. They're typically actually the mid-core players. They might be toxic towards casual players. But if you actually look at the really sweaty players, no, uh, they have no interest in, like, feeling superior because they're, they're good at a video game. Um, that's extremely uncommon in the upper echelons of actual skill level. The, the people who are actually the most toxic are always the mid-core insecure losers who think they're a lot well they think they're a lot better than they actually are yeah the truth is yep. is that like actual good players in this game don't even like interact with the casual community they're it's all private uh these days but yeah yeah and the precise reason they do is because they don't want to have this conversation over and over and over again <laughs> to be real they they don't like if you go to a um, and I have been the beneficiary of this a lot. If you go to a very good player and you say, hey, I need, actually, I'm going to use a real example. Right, Pat, I one. want to do Sarah CM, and it turns out that they needed me to play Herald. I have barely played Revenant ever. I logged into Herald and I went to the Golem and I was, um, you know, not doing very well. <laughs> I, was, I was hitting like 70% of bench and I was kind of frustrated because I just, it didn't quite click for me. I asked for help, Grimjack, arguably one of the better players in the game, perhaps one of the best, he, he offered to jump into a call and yeah, he coached me rough. through the rotation and explained the why behind it and within a couple hours I was 94% of bench. All I had to do was just ask. Right? I think generally the people that are very good players are more than happy to support you as long as you're not a total jerk to them. I just, like, I, I feel like, Sneb, we've almost talked around this conversation a bit too much. I feel like we always do this because maybe we feel like we're stating the obvious too much, but this is a multiplayer game that involves other people, and that means you have to respect them. Like, I feel like this is, is, isn't that what's being missed here? This guy is basically no. saying, well, the wishes of these other players shouldn't matter. I do what I want and I'm going to join your group and do what I want. And you can't say no to that. Like, isn't that kind of the implication yeah, I'm just gonna, that goes on Yeah, here? No, like, no BS. You're selfish if you uh, yeah. only care about yourself here. That's it. <laughs> yeah. It's just that, that's it. It's I, a fucking multiplayer game. It's my opinion game. that you should do whatever for your team. Do whatever it takes yeah. to support your team. That's that's my mantra. I get that other people will want to play the game in their particular way, but when you go into instance content, you are subscribing to a team environment. Mm. And if you cannot handle playing in a team, then do the million hours of solo content that exists. Yeah. Oh no, it's weird. Uh, I, it's just it's really hard for me to understand because I can't I do not think like that I don't ever 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 think like that So Yeah It's weird It's weird snub it, It's strange to me It's like like uh, So for those that don't know I have taught university courses and in like marketing, management, etc., and sometimes you have group projects. And I remember when I was a student doing group projects that I did the entirety of multiple projects because I had absolute garbage teammates. 
that did nothing. And so now it's come full circle and I get to like choose the, <laughs> choose what happens to these individuals, <laughs> right? And I have a policy where if, if you are not a good teammate, you instantly fail the assignment. <laughs> like if, if you bully your team, cause this has happened. Um, if you bully your team, if you don't do your share of the work, if you don't show up to meetings, if you can be fired from your team. And Clubs. if you get fired from your team, I take all of the people who were fired from their teams and put them on a team and then say, good luck. Because now you all have to work with people like yourselves who, you know, may have, uh, may have screwed over a bunch of people. And now you, you have to figure it out. Like you better have all learned your lesson and inevitably it does not work out very well for them because they they get super hard punished by it, <laughs> right? Super hard punished. If you're not a good yeah, if you're not a good teammate, then you're not gonna be a very good team. So, yeah, there there are consequences it, to these actions. Snev's doing the equivalent of like the Dota low priority matchmaking. So I think that, I'm not sure if this is still a thing in, in Dota, but I think if you basically were toxic and you kind of got um, like banned from the game or whatever or reported a lot. Like what the game would do is it would match all of like the toxic players together. So they, they'd all, <laughs> all be in the same case. Yeah. For those asking if I've actually done this, um, there was specifically one time where I was, I had my office hours and a student came to me and she started bawling. And she's like, my team has abandoned me three times. And she drove across the city to these planned meetings that they said they were gonna go to. And then these people didn't show up. And she had done, she was working two jobs and going to school full time and all, putting all this effort, doing all the organization for the team. And they just, they just totally disrespected her multiple times. And um, I said, all right, you're going to present whatever you've done to me solo right here, right now. And then um, whatever they have done, they can present on the actual day and make a fool of themselves. But uh don't talk to them anymore. Block them on everything and just don't talk to them because they don't deserve it anymore. Um, those students didn't show up and drop the class. I think because they knew they knew what their fate was going to be. But yes, I have. Uh, I go. I go really hard. I have zero patience for it. I. I do not like bullying. First of all, I will go very hard at people that bully, um, and I do not like people that um, coast and rely on their team to do everything for them. Uh, like if, if somebody is not putting in the effort, they will, they will get fired from their team and they will get punished. It's only happened a few times. Um, and every single time the student ends up dropping the class. So they essentially wasted months of their life and a bunch of, a uh, bunch of money. Well, maybe not wasted. That's a little bit harsh, but they like, they had to learn a valuable lesson. There were consequences. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I'm very, very passionate about this. I, and, and you know what's funny about this? Um, students respect it a lot. They, you, you'd think that they'd be like, oh man, this guy's so harsh or whatever. No, they actually respect it. The first, the first semester I ever taught, um, I actually was really lenient. Um, and I was quite surprised by this, but in my reviews, a hand, uh, like, well, probably like five students wrote that they thought it was unfair that I was lenient and you know what? They were right. Um, and I, I took a long, hard look in the mirror and thought about everything I did. And I was like, you know what, in order to best benefit students, you have to be fair and kind, but firm. And so I, I always am very clear about what all of my expectations are. And then I enact them. Like uh, here's, here's one of my policies. If you, uh, if something is late, it is late. I don't care if it's one second late or one day late, it is late. If it's late, there is a, there is a, a consequence to that. And the consequence isn't like, oh, you know, 2% off your mark. No, it's a quarter, like 25% off. Uh, and the reason I do that is because someday they're going to be in the real world and they're going to like hand in their project late or like miss a meeting or some crap. 
and they're going to get fired. So it's better that they get 25% off a stupid paper <laughs> than get fired someday in the future. Yeah. Um, and I've had a lot of people get really upset about that, right? And I'm like, nope, if it's late, it's late. If it's late, it is late. There is nothing I, cause like I write grants as part of my job. If, if it's two seconds late, it's late. It does. It doesn't get looked at. I just lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants. The joy. Wait, what, what is, I haven't been reading the chat. The chat is, uh. You know, they, they remind that you, you're enjoying My teaching morals? punishing people. Uh, Snap loves it. No, 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 no. He loves it. Uh, well, you should, um, you should have me as a teacher because um, I'm the kind of guy that I'll go to, I'll go to battle for you. I've had students where they, they make a stupid mistake, right? They maybe don't study for a test and they fail. And I meet them after class. I drive to the school on the days that I don't teach. I have Zoom meetings at lunch hours with them. I'm somebody that will be your mentor, your advocate, your, your like greatest ally. But I also believe that it is extremely important to actually have consequences to poor behavior and or just habits. So like if you don't study for a test and you, you earned 50%, like you have to eat what you earn. If you make everything so easy that, um, people don't have to try and they just get an A plus, then you have a big problem. Nobody's learning anything. I don't, I look, the first time I taught, um, like 40% of my class got like 50% on their first exam. It was a first year class. I panicked. I thought it was my fault. I was like so depressed that when I was marking it, I had to walk away a few times. And I thought of, for a long time about what I was doing and if it was my fault and what I should do. And so I went to the class and I gave them a 20 minute motivational speech about school. I talked to them about study, study habits. I talked to them very candidly, asked them how they studied. And I learned that most of them just didn't know how to study. It was their first year. So I taught them how to study because I didn't think anyone else would. And then I offered them redemption. I was like, look, if you work hard, you can dig yourself out of this hole and I'll do whatever it takes to help you. And so um, that's what I do. So they can't be two seconds late, but they can refuse to study for weeks. They get a do-over. What, man, dude? You're you're the kind of person I'd not like to talk to. <laughs> yes. Nah, multiple like five people got an A plus, bro. So I knew that it was it was not the test. It was uh, it was a. First year not knowing how to do something or having some kind of problem. <laughs> oh, so you're one of the people that likes to flex their degrees too. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, that's good. <laughs> oh man, I love that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, back to the other topic. We have another response here. I have no problem with the competitive part no, of the game, game. Uh, but I, it sucks that uh, as a new player, it feels like I can't play 40% of the content. And actually, I can, I can be a little bit more empathetic here, actually, because I'm here to tell you that you can. Um, you can do this content. I think you're looking at the game right now, and uh, actually, there's two things going on here. One, I actually empathize with it a lot. There's definitely a lack of difficulty settings in the game. So when you start to get into stuff, when you start to get into stuff like raids, you're definitely getting thrown in at the deep end. That's 100% true. Um, and it can be not obvious where you're supposed to start with that, but you can learn it. Even if you don't play very much, like, you know, you play an hour or a day or something like that, you absolutely can learn. Like, you can pick this stuff up. You can join a guild that will teach you. You can find some resources online, right? Um... And there are ways that you can improve in, you know, without having some kind of crazy amount of investment. Now, I'm going to temper that with saying, if you're saying, I don't want to learn about the game, then tough shit. You are not going to be able to do raids. Okay, because ultimately, challenging content requires effort. If you don't want to put that effort in, then you're not going to be playing, right? You, you know, you simply are not going to be playing that content. It is a requirement that you are going to learn and you are going to play with the team. You are 
a member of a team when you join a raid. And that means that if you're not putting in the effort, you're going to be removed. Um, this is the reality. When you're joining a group, you are competing against every single other player um, who's joining that group. The commander is going to pick the 10 best players they think they can get in order to clear that content. Like in the in the LFG anyway. It's different in guilds, but in the LFG, they're going to basically pick like the 10 best players to guarantee success. You are in a competition. It doesn't actually matter if you refuse to acknowledge the competition or if you don't like that it's a competition. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the reality. You are competing against those other players, and if you don't like it, unfortunately, it really doesn't matter. Um, and the other thing that you've done here, you've, re you've externalized that onto other people, and onto add-ons in particular. But the truth is, it's just a fundamental reality of team play and group content. That will never go away. Uh, you sh what I think a much more interesting conversation and uh, kind of thing for you to advocate for would actually be difficulty settings because basically what's going on here is that you don't want to play content that requires you to put that much effort in and you know what yeah that's fair i get it 100 percent. that's why i have always been a big advocate for making difficulty settings that you, so that you can still experience the content at an intensity that doesn't require you to kind of have a an intricate knowledge of how the game works and how builds work in the game okay but don't blame it on add-ons it's not add-ons fault it's a, the fact that there aren't difficulty settings that allow the user to customize their experience. And ultimately, it's your fault for not being willing to basically respect other people in a group, a group teamwork environment. That's how it is. Boom. Yeah. Uh, I got to admit, uh, one thing that really pisses... Okay, I, I, just, I just have to say this because I think it's important. I care a lot about teaching. So when somebody challenges whether or not I'm a good teacher, I get, I actually get a little upset because I, I, I care a lot. I, I'm the only person in the faculty. I'm not even a full-time faculty member. I go to the student events. I volunteer. I, um, students, um, most students get rejected for like applied studies and independent studies. I have told all my students that I will accept them no matter what. I actually don't get paid for those. I just do it to help the students. So I've done like five of those in the last year um, for nothing. So just an FYI, I care a lot about it. And you may not agree with all of my methods and that's okay. That's why on the first day of class, for every class I ever teach, I tell them exactly what kind of person I am. I tell them about my values. I tell them all the rules. And I say, you have a choice. You get to choose whether or not you stay in this class or not. There are other people that teach the classes that I teach, or there are other classes available. And I may not be the right teacher for you because not every key unlocks every lock. And that's OK. But that also doesn't mean that just because somebody's style isn't your style, that they're a bad teacher. I feel like when it comes to the lateness as well, like the way that I would think about that, and I imagine you'd agree with it's this. It's an equity. Well, it's a yeah, huge it's, equity. It's just, if you let someone get away with being an hour late, what about the guy who was like an hour and 15 minutes hour and late? 15, you, know, exactly. you know what I mean? It's like, and I, tell I, them I think that. you I have tell to them be that on brutal, the right? Like, I, I don't think you can... I think with lateness... It's painful. You... I don't like doing it, by yeah. the way. I tell them all that. Yeah, I tell them that if it were up to yeah. me, there'd be no late penalty at all. But yeah. if I don't have a late penalty, then students legitimately might never hand in their assignments. I've actually tested this a little bit. Like, if you don't apply a little bit of pressure um, by giving them hard deadlines and stuff, they just won't do it. They'll keep putting it off. Um, so I tell them on the first day, like that it doesn't matter if it's one second late or it's an hour late, it is still late. And so if it's between one second and 24 hours, it's a 25% deduction and then 50 and then 75 and then I won't accept it anymore. But, but um, to try to help them, I say, hey, you know what? You're probably gonna make a mistake because you're human. I would make mistakes. I did the same thing as a student and guess what? Nobody ever asked me about it, nobody cares. I learned the lesson. It's, it just is what it is. So I offer like a 5% on their final grade bonus assignment um, in case a mistake like that happens. That way it's still equitable. It's open to everyone. But this also means that I don't, um, 
you know, if, if they do make that mistake, it's not a big deal. And by the way, if somebody ever came to me, and, and this has happened a lot, you know, they get COVID or a member of their family is really hurt or sick or whatever, and they just give me a professional heads up, then I can give them an extension. But if they just say nothing and hand it in late, it's late. And I think that's fair. I join the stream when you guys yep. what is good for influence for more casual players. Separate that from a session, that's what you have. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Here's the thing. Like, my, my, what I'm saying is here is that you're blaming the wrong thing. You are blaming players and you're blaming add-ons for a problem that's actually unrelated to the two of those things, right? Like, you're saying it sucks that I, as a new player, can't immediately get into raids without a little bit of time investment. I actually agree with that. What I don't agree with is that you blamed players, you blamed people who raid, right? Which is particularly funny, um, given that the two people who are on the stream right now are some of the people who have done the most to try to get people to learn raids in this game. So there's, there's extra level of memory there. But you also blamed add-ons, which is a totally irrelevant thing to the problem. You have misdiagnosed here. You're blaming something that isn't the problem. Um, uh, and that's no good. I agree with you. Uh, getting into raids in Guild Wars 2 is actually more annoying than it should be. But that's because there aren't any difficulty settings um, so that players don't have to, like, you know, put some investment into the learning the game. In the current state of the game, if you don't want to put time into learning, you will never be able to raid unless you buy. Like, if someone says to me, hey, I want to raid in Guild Wars 2, but I don't want to put in any effort, I direct them to my friends in the raid selling guilds. And then they swipe their credit cards, they buy gems, and then... They buy raids. They will buy raids. Yeah, yeah. look, the harsh reality, I, I actually don't care if people hate me for saying this. <laughs> if you want to be on my team and you don't want to put in an effort, I'm going to say you're not allowed on my team. If you want to be on my team and you're new and you're going to put in a lot of effort, I'm going to say, how can I help you? Yeah. There's Cone. a big difference there. Are you familiar with the Cone emote, Snub? Yeah. Well, I, you, you... I, well, I don't know, actually. Cone. Do, have I seen it? Cone. I'm, it might appear in the chat. Like, there are some people oh, who have access to I... uh, Cone. That's interesting. Yeah, not that one. That's, uh, this is the imposter Cone. Get behind something. Okay, I must, I must address X-Sync here. What do you mean that it doesn't allow casuals to play content? You you could literally, right now, go into the LFG and make a group and say, Chill Wing 1 learning. And you'd probably get some people. No? Or if that doesn't work because your time zone's weird or whatever, uh, you could go into any Discord and you could say, Hey, I'm like new to raids. Like, how can I get some people or whatever. I actually want to respond as well. Two things. One, you did blame players. You actually specifically said that add-ons cause other players to kick them and you can't get... It's impossible to get experience in new raids because you basically get kicked from them immediately. Yeah, you're, you're blaming players there. Uh, but secondly, it doesn't prevent casual players. It prevents, ca it prevents players who don't want to put in any effort from playing the content right? Those are not the same things. I actually think casuals eat a lot of heat for no reason. It's kind of like almost a dirty word. To, yeah, it's like an insult to call someone a casual. I fundamentally disagree with that. It's not, it's, it's bad. It's divisive. It's stupid. Um, a casual player is not necessarily a bad player. A casual player is not necessarily a player who isn't engaged with the game or isn't engaged with the game's mechanics or isn't involved with the community in some way. Like, this is not true. Um, the people who can't raid in Guild Wars 2 are the people who refuse to put in any effort. That is the reality. And people are going to say, oh, what about this rare exception? There are obviously going to be some exceptions to that rule where some people are just, you know, they literally can play like 15 minutes a day. That's probably going to be a bit tricky, uh, to be honest. Not impossible, but, you know, that's an obstacle, that's for sure. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, it is what it is when it comes to MMOs. Like, there's going to be, they're a bit of a time sink, right, sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Did you forget the part where it squashed me, Shen, like a bug? Yes. It wasn't operating under our orders. Ugh, can you stop fighting and listen to me? Yep. We all need Big. To 
Dude, check this out. We've got a map chat comment here. AFK Arena is better than Guild Wars 2. Oh no. <laughs> it's over. We'll have it solved in minutes. <laughs> and your solutions are more likely than not to send us spinning closer to oblivion. Yeah. I'll need to be Break. there to make sure uh, it doesn't no. happen. I, I just... Sneb, I always struggle with these Sneb enjoys I, I just, psychologically like, torturing his students. And he does so yeah, in SG right. as well. That's the only reason like he made that um, build. I feel like we just speak totally different languages with... Mm -hmm. When we're talking about this, like, I just don't even know how to, I don't, I don't know how to communicate it. Like, I, I, I don't understand why it's even controversial to say, hey, like, if you're going to play on a team, okay. you should ready. be a teammate. We're about to march south. Like, to do you know the number of people I've had to remove okay. from, from groups in we'll SG because so they simply just will fall. not put in any effort whatsoever? Mm. Like, I, and just to be clear here, there's a huge, like, there are people that aren't necessarily the best players, but put in enormous amounts of effort, yeah. and they get there eventually, and everyone loves them. <clears throat> and, and then there are people that just were like, hey, you, like, your team kind of needs you. And they're like, I don't care. Yeah. We're like, then you're not going to be on the team anymore. Like, it just... I, I don't even know what to say to that. Cleanse. Um, I experienced this in a training group. I say I'm new and don't know this in a problem. I joined and after two deads, I was kicked because DPS is too low. Honestly, that's probably not a super... That's not been super well handled by the training group there. I will actually agree with that. Like, would I kick someone no. for doing low DPS in a training group? Probably not. Um, however... Did they tell you why? I mean, well, they, I, they said low that, DPS, I guess, right? Well, okay. Did they try to... Yeah. The training group probably wasn't very good, to be frank. Because if you're in my group and your DPS sucks, mm. I'm going to tell you. Mm. And I actually make sure that that's okay with everyone before we begin. I say, hey, this is a practice group, a training group. I'm going to tell you, respectfully, if you're just not performing to what would be kind of like a medium level. Mm. But, because that's the only way you can improve. If if you don't know, then like I'm going to be the guy that's going to have the hard conversation so that you can improve. And I'm going to help do whatever it takes mm. to get you there. So if if you come in and you're doing 5k DPS on a soul beast at Veil Guardian, I'm going to question why. And I think that's fair. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to say, hey, like before we even continue further, we need to figure out why you're doing one tenth of the damage well i don't know it's quite you know yeah. but like what one a fifth of the damage that is possible right we need to figure out what's going on exactly and it could be your build it could be your gear it could be that you don't understand your class it could be a mixture of all of those things but the reality is um th this is my opinion everyone else will do this differently and that's okay but my opinion is before you even go into raids you kind of need to to prepare. Think of it like you're about to go play um, some sport that requires equipment. If you just show up to the field without any equipment, they're going to be like, well, you can play, but like, do you really want to get hurt? <laughs> you know, or like, you know, it's, it's not really going to work, right? So um, my opinion is that you should do everything you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you should do everything you can to have the right equipment and be prepared, the right build, kind of understand your class before you go in um, so that you can be the most effective you can possibly be and practice correctly. Yeah. And also, I, I do want to highlight something here as well. Um, I want to put yourself as a new player. I want to try a raise, get that experience. Do you think I want to continue the game? I say no way. I go play another game. Um, to be honest, if you get put off by being told, by one negative experience in the game, I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, right? Um, no, I, I, no, I, I reject that, to be honest. I, I reject it, no. Um, if you get put off by one negative experience, especially when, at the end of the day, well, you were the problem because you did very low damage and you weren't performing very well, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't even think it's, it's about that. Yeah. Let me read this again. 
It says, okay, I get that, but just put yourself a new player who just want to try right and get that experience. You think you want to continue playing the game? Oh, so they're saying get the experience of getting kicked? Yeah, getting kicked sucks. Um, it does. It, yeah. But the reality is that if you're going to go into... I, I don't really know what to tell you. You had a bad experience. You can now choose how you move forward with that. It sucks. I, I, I had people tell me horrible things that I probably can't say on stream. People told me to harm myself and all kinds of stuff when I was learning raids. I actually think the community's gotten friendlier over time. Um, but uh, you, you have to choose how you're going to respond to that. It's the only thing that you can control in this situation. And I do think it's a shame that people have those experiences. All we can do as a community is try to reduce those experiences as much as possible. And then if you have an experience like that, Vow to help other people never have those experiences like you had. So, yeah, I I don't really know what to tell you. Like, if if you take it that hard on one time, um, and I'm not saying this to be dismissive or rude or anything, but also you might want to evaluate if if the game mode or the game or whatever is for you. Like, if if you're having those experiences consistently or it really, really bothers you, you also have to know when to take mm. a step back and go, ah, you know what? Yeah. Like, it shouldn't be that way, but it is, and I'm unhappy with it, I'm gonna avoid it. That's also perfectly acceptable. That's like me and PVP, right? Like, I joined PVP and I'm like, remember Teapot? I played like 10 games and you watched and I got flamed in like four of them yeah. and people were like saying horrible things. Brutalized, yeah. Yeah, it was it was terrible. And so I just choose not to play a lot of PvP because I don't like surrounding myself um, with that kind of negativity. Look, I'll just say this. Um, content that is hard or you can lose. Any situation where you can lose. This is not something that um, I think is necessarily good, but I think it is a reality. Negative experiences will happen with that. Like, there's really no getting away from it, right? Like, there are always going to be times where you are the problem, you fail, you make the mistake, or you lose, you can't beat it, you can't clear it. Like, stuff that is difficult, the payoff is that it feels really good to overcome that challenge, to develop yourself as a player and improve. But the downside is, is that, yeah, sometimes it kind of sucks, right? And... I, I think maybe this, you'll find this um, useful, actually, because I think Sneb's kind of getting at this, and, and yeah, um, everyone has this experience, uh, X-Sync, right? Everyone does. Like, everyone has that one time where you're doing your raid clear, and it just doesn't click, right? And people are not on it today, and you struggle, and you wipe, and, you know, you, you beat your head into it. And everyone has that day in PvP where you're just not firing on all cylinders right you, you, you're just not on it and you lose a bunch of games and you know that you threw them and you know that you were losing 1v1s that you shouldn't have lost you know that you weren't doing the team fights properly right this is kind of the trade-off you make right you do get the higher highs in my opinion not everyone likes this I, I you know with challenging content hard content you have the high highs of like fuck yes let's go right you know you you win it's a big win right you're like you're smashing you're crushing right but yeah part of that is that you're gonna have days where it's just it's, it's, it's just not you're just not quite there and you're gonna have bad experiences. You're gonna get kicked. You know, you're gonna wipe the group and you're gonna go, fuck me, I wiped the group. That feels super bad, right? Like, oh my God, what? this this sucks, right? Yeah, absolutely. There are gonna be times where people call you bad, right? Uh, especially in pugs. You can mitigate that. You can join guilds and that will massively minimize the chance of someone calling you dog shit. So that's the, that's the good news, right? Hold on. Um, in, in that regard. But yeah, what's up? We've I've, I've, this, is, this is the Omega question for X-Sync. Okay. Okay. We've come to the we've yeah. come to this point. X Sync, do you agree or disagree with gear check? There you go. Bingo cards, everybody, but we just gotta we I just gotta hear this. I gotta know because this will, this is very important to the rest of the the rest of the discussion. <laughs> uh don't If I could content. check your gear, would you like that? Yeah. Don't lock content around experience, make it separate for a bit of new players. Well, they actually do this. Yeah, it's literally done in the LFG, no? Like, um, I, I, I actually don't think this is a particularly good thing, actually. I think players can do a better job of this than two tabs in the LFG can. That's another conversation. But yeah, 
Like, groups do this. Like, groups say, experience, you need kill proof, you need, you know, we're gonna check your logs, versus new players welcome, training group, right? Um, and like it or not, I do want to actually mention this. Um, did feedback about your DPS get delivered to you in a good way? Actually, no. I think the training group who did that was wrong. They should have probably let you stay on and kind of gently explained what was going on and tried to help you. They didn't do a very good job of that. I am completely with you on that. However, they did tell you- they, they don't have to have you stay, but they have to tell you- Sure, okay, what's, fine, yeah. That's yeah, wrong yeah, yeah, it. yeah, sure. And, you know, like, but, like it or not, they told you the problem. And as Sneb says, you get to decide. Do you give up and go, well, I'm just going to blame them for gatekeeping me? Or are you going to say, you know what? I know my DPS isn't good enough. I'm going to go and improve it. And then I'm going to try again. Like, those are the decisions that you have to make. Because, like it or not, they did give you feedback in a harsh way. But it was feedback nonetheless. They told you the problem. Um, so, it's up to you if you want to fix it or not. The observatory is being protected by that salt spray dragon. Yeah. Okay, you said you disagree with gear check. I don't, I actually don't think we can help you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the problem. Um, the reality here is you, you said you didn't like that it was, um, it, unless I'm misunderstanding, and if I am, then please correct me, but you're saying that not to lock the content behind experience. The reason people lock the content behind experience is because they have absolutely no other way to validate anything else. And so when I ask you, if you agree with gear check and you say no, what you're saying is that you want to hide whether or not um, you have the proper build ready for the content. And if, um, if you, and that's usually because you don't. And so what you're saying is that you'd rather sneak into groups and, and again, this is a bit of a stretch, but it, you'd rather go into a group blind and then they discover that you don't have the right build or whatever. And then they are forced to kick you from the group because you're not prepared for the encounter. There's, this is actually, I, I really want you to think, and I, I wanna be clear that I think you went through a horrible thing and that it sucks to get kicked from a group, but I also want to help you empathize with someone like me who's had to kick people from groups. It is not fun. I don't like it. It sucks. It's actually the worst part of commanding. It's one of the reasons why um, lots of people get like commander anxiety. They don't want to be the leader because they don't want to have to make those difficult choices. Do you understand why going into a group unprepared or going into a group where you don't have the experience or whatever would be detrimental to the group and would negatively affect the group and the commander? and actually give a bad experience for the commander. And then, consequently, do you understand why people are so picky about experience then? It's a shame we had to kill it. Its actions were not its own. I think that's a fair question, Teapot. I think it is, yes. Nothing to be done about it, except putting an end to the I'm not saying it's a good system, by the way. I actually think it sucks, but it's the only system we have. And yeah. so- And you know what? Uh, I, I look, I love saying this because it makes people quite angry and I'll admit that I like making people angry. It entertains me. You know what game has gear check, guys? And a really good way to check how well people perform in raids, their experience level, um, like how, you know, what dungeons they're capable of clearing, right? And the skill level they're at. Oh yeah, it's World of Warcraft. And guess what? That game is fucking piss easy to get into as a result of this. Because it is extremely easy to set expectations for your group. And it is very easy as a result of that to know what you're dealing with. Uh, and it makes making groups, even as a new player, extremely fucking easy. And it massively reduces the level of toxicity that you encounter because everyone's basically on the same page because there's a number that says how good you are at the game. And it turns out that's actually a really good idea. Yes. That's right, guys. You know, I, I always wonder how people resolve this in their head, right? Like, uh, stra at this point, straight up, I think WoW raiding in Mythic Plus is actually less toxic than um, PvE in Guild Wars 2. 
and it's the game that's got the evil gear check and the evil add-ons, and it's also got the evil Raider IO score and Warcraft logs parsing website where everyone's logs are public, and you well, you can hide them actually, but you can look up everyone's parses and everyone's logs. You can do that in the game dynamically. You know exactly how many heroic bosses people have killed. You know exactly how many mythic bosses people have killed. How is it that this game with all of this crazy toxic system why is it less toxic than Guild Wars 2? Why does it work better than Guild Wars 2? Why is it easier to get into than Guild Wars 2? What's going on? How is that possible? Um, like, with if it's got all of these horrible evil systems that the, the friendly Guild Wars 2 would never have, why is it so much easier to get into? I don't know. Like, how does that make any sense? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. This is this is kind of important. Yeah. I understand that, but that does not change the fact that you try the content. I agree the system's problem. I don't want to kind of system in Guild Wars 3. I, I don't quite understand, um, I think. You might have to explain, uh, change the fact that you try the content. I, I'm not sure I get it. It, how do I explain this even? If you, if you go to the gym and you don't have shoes on and you're barefoot and you walk up to a bunch of college basketball players and you say, yo, can I scrim with you guys? They're gonna be like, uh, uh, you don't have the shoes. Like we're gonna step on your feet and stuff. <laughs> and you probably wouldn't be able to play with them, right? And you're just not prepared. And so it's not a matter of like it being completely inaccessible. It's just that you're not ready. And, and it is okay to have that in a game. It is okay to have it, to have a piece of content that is difficult that requires some preparation. That's okay. And to me, what it's sounding like, uh, and I don't know that you mean it to sound this way, but what it's sounding like is you're saying, I want it to be fine that I can go in unprepared. That's kind of like the logical flow of this. And um, it actually is true that you could go in unprepared, but you have to find I'm not nine right now. I have people in the past, though. who are willing to consent to you being completely unprepared. Like you could go in and be completely honest with people and just say, I haven't looked at my build, haven't looked at my gear, don't really know how to play my class, haven't looked at any guides, have no idea about what's about to happen, but I want to experience the content. Is it okay that I stay? And they can choose to say yes or no, right? I, I personally wouldn't advocate that that happens. Like, I, I don't think that that's necessarily a good thing for the team or for the player, because then the player doesn't really get to practice properly. This is why I always, like, if I do a training, I say, hey, you need minimum exotic gear with a build that makes sense. Your gear doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to make sense, and it needs to, uh, you need to kind of know what's going on as far as your build goes. It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to have a crazy bench or anything like that, um, but you need to be somewhat prepared, if only to help yourself um, get better and to help your teammates complete the content and get the most out of the experience. And I don't believe that that's exclusionary. I believe that that's the kind thing to do in a team environment. The respectful thing, the courteous thing to do. Would you agree with that? Let's find out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And people are saying that my experience in WoW is only that way because I'm a tryhard. I will actually agree that it is skewed towards less toxicity because of that and because I play tank. Those two things actually massively improve the experience <laughs> because if you play tank, you can kind of hard carry more than... It's like the highest impact role, so yes, you can carry pretty hard with that. But honestly, uh, for the record, I actually don't think that Gil will... I, I, okay, right. Let me actually contextualize what I said there a bit more. Uh, I actually... Hot take. I don't think Guild Wars 2 is very hard to get into, and I also don't think that WoW is hard to get into, and I actually think that neither game is toxic. I don't think any of them, like, has, like, a actual major toxicity problem. Maybe in PvP, okay, it's a little spicy, right? But, I mean, that's fucking PvP, right? Like, it is what it is. It, it's, you know, things are always getting a little frisky in PvP. That's not the point. But when it comes to, like, uh, Mythic Plus, 
uh, and raiding and strike missions, fractals, um, raids in Guild Wars 2, I really don't think there's a toxicity issue. Like, the only time you're really going to get toxicity, in my opinion, in any of these game modes, um... It is, is if you are refusing to engage or you perform extremely badly, right? Um, for sure. And pugging keys, I don't think pugging keys is actually bad in, in Guild Wars 2. Even high keys, actually. Again, this is on tank, so it's a little bit different. But I actually pugged multiple um, near title keys last seasons. I was pugging 27s um, last season in my downtime to upgrade my key as homework for when we were pushing with my main group. And honestly, it wasn't toxic. Dude, hell, like, this is actually really funny. We, um, we basically joined a guy's group for a 25 under when we were still learning. And I shit you not, guys, it was me and everyone except Snizzle. We basically joined Russian Snizzle's group because it was late at night. And we depleted the key to the first boss. So we literally griefed this guy. And it was our fault, by the way. I, I remember this very distinctly. It was 100% our fault. We depleted the key. This guy's key got downgraded to a plus 24 within around three minutes of starting it. And he said, GG, go next. And then he left the group. It was like, we literally fucking trolled this guy. Um, and he was like, it is what it is. We go next. Uh, nah. It, it really ain't that bad, to be honest. Like, you know, it's it's, it's whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, did, why did we grieve this guy? Well, it wasn't our night, okay? Right? It, it, it was not our night. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's put it like that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, pugging title keys does sound like pain, to be honest, but that's because it's actually hard, right? Like, pugging anything that's actually hard is, you know, it's it's going to be rough, to be honest. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Has there been a response yeah. yet? I haven't seen anything. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's over. Not even depleting the key. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, that can happen. The That's the... That's one of the really big downsides about content actually being hard and having a fail state. Like, the reason why Mythic Plus gets toxic is the same reason that um, PvP gets toxic in Guild Wars or World vs. World. It's because you can actually lose. You can't really lose a Tier 4 Fractal. Not really. You can absolutely lose a Mythic Plus key, though. Um, and people do get a little bit over mad. I really haven't seen it, though, to be honest. I really haven't seen it. Um, I pugged a lot as well. And by the way, not even on an account that shows my IO. Obviously, people are going to be nice to me because they see I'm 3.7k, right? So people are going to, you know, I'm not going to get flamed. It's pretty unlikely. Um, but I haven't really witnessed a lot of toxicity. Like, even when the key depletes and it's completely fucked. Hell, dude, I actually, I was doing um just like a random plus 24 throne the other day. Um, and our healer literally left before the first boss. He got killed like three times by the trash. He said, fuck this, I am out, I refuse to play. Left the game, nobody raged, and we actually just finished the key on our own, right? Like we were like, I was like, listen guys, we're good. We just finished the key, not a big deal. You know, we, we play it out. Nobody got mad and we just we just played and we managed to time that, right? It is what it is. I, uh, you know, it's, it happens. Yeah. But yes, like in WoW, you do run endings because you can lose. It's it's not free, right? It's it's not free. Yeah. The game is originally toxic for a reason. Uh, I I disagree with that to be honest. Like um, like Guild Wars Two raids have a reputation for being toxic, but it's a stupid reputation. It's it's not it's bu it's not true. It's a lie. Um, it's the same thing with, um, it's the same thing with tier 3 and tier 4 fractals. People are like, oh yeah, bro. People are so toxic in tier 3 and tier 4 fractals, bro. No, they really aren't. I, 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 I guarantee you, they, they really, really aren't. It, it's not a big deal there. Um, it, it really isn't. People are yeah. so afraid of being toxic in raids yeah. that if, if somebody is like obviously not up to the, the standard of the group or whatever, People will just leave the group and say nothing rather than than say something because they feel like if they say something that it's going to be perceived as toxic and that it's less toxic to just leave. Excellent. 
Happens all the time. Lots of groups just completely fold because they just don't want to talk about it. Because if they talk about it, someone's going to get offended. <laughs> so, okay, guys, I'm going to tell you guys about the only time I got flamed in WoW. I actually don't think I've told this story before. Uh, and I'm going to tell this story. Now. This one's actually really fucking good because this was actually insanely fucking troll. Holy shit. Okay, so it was a Brackenhide 22. And I was just starting to get the grips of, of the game. I was like just starting to learn the game. And this was like the highest key I'd ever attempted. It was like a plus 21 or a plus 22 Brackenhide. Um, and everything's going well. We're clearing all the trash. Um, you know, it's not a problem. And we get to the second boss. Okay, uh, we get to Tree Mouth, and this is a tree that base. Oh, I definitely did. Well, I, I mean, it's what you mean by deserve it. It was definitely my fault. Um, but basically, what happened was, um, this boss has, like, a frontal attack, and it, like, hits everyone in front of you, right? And it targets the tank, and you have to not point it at the group, okay? And, it, like... <laughs> So what what was going on? I guess it's not entirely my fault, but it was pretty much my fault. Like the 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 healer was kind of running around in circles, was being a little bit unhinged, and I tried to move the frontal away from the healer, but that didn't happen. Okay, like I, I but we we were like spinning around trying to avoid each other, and the frontal just obliterated him. And the, he, he was fucking mad. He was like, Tank, maybe Mythic Plus isn't for you, okay? Like, <laughs> Got him. And he, he like immediately rage quits the group. He's like, fuck this. I'm out. It was probably time of the way. It wasn't over. It, it probably wasn't over. But he, he was out, you know? He was fucking done, right? Like, <laughs> he was out, man. Uh, and, you know, it, it, that's that's actually the only time I've been flamed. And, of course, you know, the thing is, is that sticks in my mind because I was like, oh, man, fuck, I trolled, fuck, I've screwed up, I messed up, I woke the group, man, I just found the key. Uh, and, and, obviously, like, I remember that because it's very negative. But what's actually funny, and I think this is actually a kind of a tank thing, to be honest. Like, dude, people love to jerk off tanks and WoW. Like, tank is the ultimate ego role. Whenever I do, like, weekly 20s on my DK, people always go, yo, bro, sick DPS, man. Like, yo, nice blast, DK. Right? Like, it's, it's actually, like, giga ego, dude. Like, it's mega ego stroking. Because, like, people love to compliment tanks in that game. It's actually crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That's funny. But yeah, you know, you learn from it, right? And you try to not make that mistake again. You know, you got to be careful with that frontal on the uh, on the tree boss. Tree mouth is dangerous, guys. You know, like. It may already be too late. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I know people in a community like to join raids and experience people and troll them, make them miserable. Oh, well, uh, I mean, that's just loser behavior. There's, you're going to find degenerates like that in every game. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, obviously, that's dog shit. That's, like, insane cringe loser behavior. What can I say? I don't know. Uh, uh. Nice. Nice. I actually, I need, I'm going to play DPS and healer in season four in WoW because I want to know what I think the hardest role is, um, to be honest. Because right now, I, I obviously don't know. Uh, and I think it's probably a bit silly to say the hardest role because they're all going to be difficult in different ways. Like, you know, sometimes tanks are going to basically do nothing in certain situations. And it's really stressful for the DPS. You've got to line your defenses up correctly. You've got to make sure that you're going to survive the one hit, right? You've got to position correctly so you can get your DPS off, right? Or all, all that kind of stuff. And then sometimes the tank is going to be like, what the fuck is going on? This is the most cursed pull in history. I have to do 15 stops and I've got to live like 10 mobs attacking me. And this boss is insanely fucked up and I'm pulling trash under the boss at the same time. Holy shit, this is hell. Like, and the DPS just kind of fucking pay phone and going like, oh, I'm cranked guys Ooh, look at me i'm pressing my cooldowns whoa I, I, so it's like yeah it's gonna be uh you know it's uh it, it's 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 gonna be different situations right like uh it's gonna be harder or easier for uh for different specs and different roles in the game 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna play Rat. I was gonna play Rat Paladin because, like, oh, oh, yeah, Divine Shield, bro. Oh, yeah, Divine Storm, bro. Come in, Commander. Feels good. I can see Aureen. She's joining the battle. Stacking haste verse. That's what we love to see. Yes. Invincible class. I mean, I don't know what DPS I want to play. Uh, I wa I'm going to play Mistweaver because Mistweaver is probably the god healer uh, for keys next season. So I'll probably play that. But DPS, I'm really undecided. Like, there's actually a lot of ones that are kind of interesting, actually, that uh, I'd like to have a go at. But yeah, it might be it might be Mage or it might be uh, Org. Oh, I, I don't. I really don't want to play Org though, to be honest. But maybe it has to happen. Yeah, I mean, Mistweaver is going to be really good in Season 4 dungeons, because one, it, there's a lot of, like, um, damage over time, right, in the uh, in the Season 4 dungeons, and that's just so nice for Mistweaver, right? Like, you just, you can just, like, giga juice everyone, you can output everyone really hard. That's, um, yep, yeah, it's very good. My pleasure. Oh yeah, and you have Revival too, yeah, so you can do the Dispels, and you're going to need that sometimes. Yup. On my count, three, two, one, fire! Incredible. Duh, don't kill her. I mage is cool. I I like to play mage. Did it. Uh, I played Mage in uh, original WoW, right? Played it in, like, all the way through until I basically stopped playing, which was kind of after, like, Kata, I think. Uh, Mage was hype. Me and Nick got a Marks Hunter at a 27. He was, pu he was blasting and sees 1.5 million. Yo, that's fucking based. Brother, you played fire and plus twos. That look, honestly, Vivi can't flame rated for She's breaking the fire mage. Because here's the thing, guys. Like Vivi literally played fire mage in like plus three throne, and there was like, I can't handle this. I'm playing ret instead. Like he he can't. He actually cannot shit talk rated. I am allowed to bully rated because I'm the group leader and I'm the tank. So I'm actually allowed to bully everyone. Except Snizzle, because if I bully Snizzle, then he won't uh, dispel me. So, yeah. That's how it is. Very nice. Yeah, I don't want to piss Snizzle off, man. Like, you know, he was going crazy. Like, last night he was, like, going berserk, like, forcing Raiden to install, like, five weak auras. Actually crazy. <laughs> The world is Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Vivi out DPS by two pugs on 27 Ataldazar? Bro, what is this, dude? Literally lower DPS than pugs. That's crazy. 30k DPS below Marx Hunter? That's actually wild. I think Gil who should make learning more intuitive and not require a wiki to study and YouTube, watch a YouTube video over and over. You know... Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. You know... <sighs> I think you can't avoid some of that, but I think you can reduce some of that. Yeah. The issue I have my, with My that argument is for reduction. Is... Do you not think that that is inevitable in an old game. Because what I mean by that is that, you know, you know, games get older, right? Like time passes. And as time passes, like the cumulative knowledge piles up and up and up and up. 
I would actually kind of, I would kind of compare this actually to um, science, right? And or not just science, but uh, human knowledge, right? Like, when you go to school, you don't figure out every single thing from first principles, right? Like, you essentially, you might do an experiment that shows you how to get that result, and it, you can build the equation yourself by doing an experiment, or and something like that. But you don't figure out every single thing from first principles yourself. Like, you will learn the ideas from somewhere, someone else. And I think, ultimately, isn't that kind of the same thing with video games? The issue is, is that if you have a game that's highly mature, which is very much like, you know, World of Warcraft and Guild Wars 2 are great examples. They've been around forever, right? Um, there's so much learning that's already been done by the player base over the years that it's inevitable that a new player is not just going to figure out all of that, that it took players ages. I mean, look, like, do you recall, Snare, when people didn't realize that Scourge was good when Path of Fire came out? People were trying to do Doom with fucking weavers, right? People didn't realize how broken Epidemic was. Yeah. People, like, when people started doing Epistrat on Doom CM, that was actually groundbreaking. Yeah. Like, even, even the best players in the game were clueless uh, about what was actually good uh, until relatively recently, to be honest, right? Um, uh, it, you know, in, uh, you know, in, in terms of, like, how the game plays out. Like, so... I definitely agree with with this idea of like, yeah, we should, the game should not be needlessly bloated or needlessly complex. But I do think that there is an inherent problem with kind of live service games that kind of reach this maturity over time that inherently means that there's going to be this, this, this kind of like a research element or learning element to them, like purely because of the way that they work. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, because I, I really think that... Could you learn the game from scratch as a casual? Or, or uh, sorry, I shouldn't say casual, as a new player. Yeah, you absolutely could, but it's going to take you a long time. Why? Because it took even the best players in the game a long time. It took everyone a long time to figure all of it out, right? It's just that you can't really wind back the clock, right? Uh, so everyone's starting in the same place. Like, not everyone, you, you're not starting in the same place. But you do have the opportunity to stand on the shoulders of giants. And that's not going to be in the game. That's going to be, like, in the community resources. Guild Wars 2 is a relatively easy game, though. The content is easy, but I don't think there's any... There are very few games that are truly easy in the mechanical sense. Because in this context, when we say an easy game, we'd say non-skill dependent. And realistically, almost every video game outside... Well, out, every game, rather, outside something like Tic-Tac-Toe is incredibly skill dependent, right? And has, like, a very high skill curve. The skill curve or the skill cap of a game like Guild Wars 2 is insanely high. The skill cap of a game like World of Warcraft is ridiculously high. Um, especially because that game has esports, right? Um, like, the skill cap of... Uh, of chess is inhumanly high, even though this is a game that's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a couple of simple rules that it leads to an incredibly complex emergent series of gameplay, right? Um, but even in chess, what's interesting, about, I think chess is a really cool example, actually, because chess now, a huge amount of, I guess, learning chess wouldn't just be like, I need to be get, I need to be better at moving my pieces around. It would be the theory and the meta game around the game, right? Like this is my understanding is that you need to have a very good grasp on how the openings work and how you might respond to those openings and the different strategies that you can do as you kind of like in the early game when you're going into the mid game. You need to understand what happens in the late game as well. Like a lot of it is the same, even though even though chess is a simple game, quote unquote, right? Um, because it, you know at the end of the day, you know it's it's simple rules that turn into something incredibly complex at the end of the day it's still the same thing humans have been playing chess for hundreds and hundreds of years and now we've got uh, ai that can do it better than we could ever even imagine in terms of playing chess but the thing is even though the game is simple the knowledge is insane there like you need to build up a huge understanding of all of like the meta game that happens um in in chess right if you want to get good at it like you need to have this knowledge you you can't just kind of go in blind you need to understand the theory as well uh, and essentially the meta game that's been built up by by humans over time
Does that make any sense? I don't know. Chess is hard. I mean, chess is hard, <laughs> yes. Uh, but I would say that basically yeah. any game is hard, especially when it becomes competitive, right? Yeah. Inevitably, they will become difficult. Mm. Yeah. Chess is far harder to learn than Guild Wars 2. Um, I mean, I would... S what do you mean by that? That's a very good question. Um, or, or that's a that's a interesting thing you've said there. Is it harder to learn than Guild Wars 2? I would say Guild Wars 2 has a much more complicated rule set than chess. Um, chess is more competitive, right? Like, 100%. Like, there are professional chess players. There are, uh, you know, uh, borderline superhumans who play that game, right? Um, and, you know, are insane, obviously. But is it harder to learn? Um, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. It's much harder to be a top chess player than a top Ch Guild Wars 2 player. But that's only because... Um, Guild Wars 2 isn't very competitive. Like, if you ask me what's harder, uh, to be a top League of Legends player or a top chess player, ooh, I don't know about that, honestly. Um, that's interesting. I think both of those things are exceptionally difficult. Like, insane. Like, what's harder, being like a top, uh, high level, actually competitive esports player or a top chess player? Pff, I don't know, honestly. They're probably really, both really hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, chess is way harder because you can't expect your opponent can do. Wait, actually, I don't, that's not my understanding of it. I think that there's actually a lot of, um, kind of understanding how your opponent's going to be, going to respond. In fact, you, it, this is why, like, people even do stuff like pre-move, even, uh, in faster versions of chess, right? Like, people are absolutely predicting what their opponent is going to do. And also, chess is an information-complete game. You can see the exact state of the board. Like, in a game like League of Legends or Guild Wars 2, that's not the case. You actually can't see your opponent's cooldowns. You can't actually see the absolute position of your opponents at all times. Um, so I, I, I know, I, I think that's not a good objection, actually. Yeah. Esports, what esports game? I think. Oh yeah, of course. Like all of the competitive gaming. Like I think the two two ones that would come to mind would be chess and go. These are like highly competitive uh, esports, as it were, right? Uh, before that, you know, they've been around long before computers were a thing. Yeah. How many FPS do you have uh, right now? Thirty. It's not looking hot. Isn't going on at tennis hard and chess? I don't fucking know. How am I supposed to know? I mean, they're both probably very hard. But I mean, the truth is, guys, is that anything is extremely hard when humans are competing with it. Like, Go is... Uh, the, the human skill level for something like Go or chess is essentially unlimited, right? Like, there's no upper bound for this. And we know this because AI can completely wipe the floor with us. Um, so w nobody's at the skill cap. Uh, yet, because like stuff like AlphaGo and um, uh, and you know uh, the fucking chess engines, right, will farm you, right? You will get completely destroyed. You will not beat them. Even the best players in the world won't beat the best chess engines in the world. You will get crushed. Yeah. Hard to become a high level grandmaster. I agree, but oh, but here's the thing, Spring Logs. I think that's only true because nobody takes Guild Wars 2 seriously. Um, look, okay, let's, okay. Everyone's gonna agree with this, by the way. Um, this is uh, inarguable. Um, nobody actually tryhards Guild Wars 2 in the same way that people tryhard, let's say WoW, let's say Final Fantasy, let's say chess, let's say Go, let's say sport at the Olympics. Like, nobody is grinding this game and just getting better and better and better at it every single day uh, for money right basically so yeah the skill level in chess and wow is far higher like echo and liquid are far better wow players than the best guild wars 2 players are at guild wars 2 it's actually not even close by the way it's not even remotely close those guys are so much better actually um than top guild wars 2 players um but that's just because they're professionals. I, I don't know what to say, right? Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, that that's how it goes. Like, people take that game very, very seriously, and people are, are ludicrously tryhard, um, uh, you know, at that game because they do it for money, and that means they have the ability to dedicate a huge amount of their life in order to being insanely good at that video game. But if, um, if, uh, let's say that. Um, Guild Wars 2 had professional esports, then yes, you would see 
it would be as difficult or, you know, in the same ballpark to be a top level Guild Wars 2 player as it would be to be a top level, let's say, chess player, right? Or something like that. Because it's both really fucking hard. It's very, very difficult. Video games are hard. Yeah. Ah. If Echo was a Guild Wars 2 guild, would they have day one Sarah CM? Uh, not, maybe not with the uh, bugged HP, but if Echo were as good as Guild Wars 2 as they are at WoW, yes, Saros would have died day one. Really? That's interesting. It, it's that different, eh? Yeah. Uh, or extremely like they're, they're good. that skill? Yes. Um, th the stuff they pulled off in the latest raid is insane to be honest like the the difficulty of unnerfed tindril and unnerfed farak yeah they, they did unnerfed farak and unnerfed tindril in like 200 pulls um uh, each <laughs> that is insane like the bosses um the bosses in emit like the unnerfed versions of those bosses in uh they are much harder than legendary mode Ceres, yes Uh, they are, they are on another level, to be honest. We have to do this. Reach deep inside, and you will feel the emptiness already. Solby's cult could have killed day one if you had the theory craft. That was honestly a very good cook, Grim. To be honest, it was actually a, such a sick cook. Um, honestly, really cool. It's kind of true. I, I'm actually inclined to agree with you, Grim, by the way. I actually do think that your strategy was superior um, to the Virtuoso strategy, which is kind of funny, actually, because, of course, everyone was going crazy about how, oh, yeah, Vert is so OP. But I, I actually think Grim and NA's strategy was actually significantly superior to what EU came up with. Um, uh, much better for doing the uh, the strategy that he did that, you know, that ended up being the strategy to kill a boss. Yeah. Yeah. She's right. Don't waste this opportunity. Let's go. It has to be done. It is time. Ceres might not have died day one, by the way, guys, because the fight's kind of long. But it would have died very quickly um, with, you know, uh, Echo Liquid level of skill uh, in Guild Wars 2. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Is receding. I see it. So many dead. So much sacrifice. Bro, I can't loot anything. I never thought I would see this day. It's over. May the gods be praised. I never thought I'd see us all. Yo, I'm in the chats. The void, yes. We have defeated Su Wan. You can follow the trail I left. Even with the bugs on day one. Nah, I mean I I I am not realistically like the bugged version day one wouldn't have died because that fight was probably no definitely impossible honestly like you're, you're not killing 160 million hp saros i don't think the numbers exist in the game uh to to actually beat that but like yeah like they would have killed the um the you know when they adjusted the health that would have died extremely fast yeah like extremely fast yeah yeah they wouldn't have fumbled for five days on 1%. Yeah, I, I think l less likely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I mean, look, that's not a slight on the Guild Wars 2 players. Like, the top Guild Wars 2 players are obviously really good at the game. But it's important to draw... There's a big difference, guys, between basically people who play a game as a hobby and play hardcore versus people who literally do it professionally. Like, that's a big step up. Like, you know, um, no matter what. This battle will be written about in history books. I can't believe we were up That's, you know, that's that's the reality of the situation. Yeah. Because, like, straight up, like, like we obviously killed Saras, guys. But to be honest, I don't think we kill un... Nah. In fact, there's no fucking way. We, we don't kill unnerfed Farak or unnerfed Tindril. That, that's just not going to happen, to be honest. It's honestly, especially Tindril, right? Like, you know... It, there's no fucking way, to be honest. There's absolutely no way. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's no way. So here's the mechanic, Snub. Here's the uh, mechanic. Uh, there's 20 seeds spawn. 
And you have to collect all 20 of them within three seconds. If you don't, the group wipes. The seeds spawn in a kind of random pattern that you can semi-bait. And here's the other kicker. If you collect more than one seed by accident, it also wipes the group. So every player has to do exactly one oh. seed. Uh, and if you don't, you die instantly. Like, th that kind of stuff is just brutal, man. No, 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 I do not ignore YouTube chat. I, no one's saying anything in YouTube chat. Boom. Maybe in like six months to a year. YouTube chat. I mean, honestly, I feel like it would take a very long time to, to kill that. Like maybe six months to a year, we'd get there in the end. But there's no fucking way it dies for cutting edge. Absolutely not. Like, and bear in mind, like we did like the giga nerf version of Farak. Like, man, we would struggle so much like on the um, on nerf version of Farak. Holy shit. On nerf Farak was so brutal, dude. Oh, man. Do you think top WoW guilds would do uh, triple greens? It's actually very interesting. I think they would probably identify the fact... I think they would have... They were, I don't think they would go for the... Oh, man. The thing is, they're really good at doing stuff like portals. Um, because that's like a big thing in WoW, like doing the movement. Maybe they would go for the beam and they just skip it. Um, maybe... Oh, that's a good question, to be honest. I definitely do think that um, it is arguable that doing um, greens was a mistake and actually doing beams was better, um, I think. That's definitely arguable. Um, it, yeah. It's actually very interesting, like, what's the optimal one? Greens are a... F the only thing is that greens are a very free mechanic. Like, once you get the hang of it, like, it, it shouldn't kill you. Um, like, it shouldn't kill you if you do it right. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess the Alak Steel makes it really annoying if you fuck it up. Um, oof. yeah, that, that, w that was very bad. That was, like, a big factor in us not trying that even. We actually had a cook for dealing with it, but, yeah, we didn't really bother with it too much. Because it's just, if it goes wrong, like, your entire run is screwed. Yeah, yeah, because it steals boons from the AI, right? That That is a bit cursed. Yeah. I guess it depends. Yo, place in the chat. Yeah. Would you have to kill Unnerf Smolderon? I think Unnerf Smolderon was not that bad. It, it's obviously a lot harder, but not undoable, I think. Uh, how does Echo not letting beginners into their programs affect the new player experience? Very funny. Um, hey, look, you can book a coaching session with them. Boom. There you go. Or you can be a gamer and get shredded with Jinji's, like, uh, fucking get fitness program. Boom. Let's go. Yeah. That's what I was, I was saying on greens. Well, yeah, it's more like um, which, which mechanic they would consider to be, like, uh, less punishing, I guess. Because, yeah, I don't, they, they'd be fine with, like, they'd be fine with greens either way, right? I think they'd be okay with it. Um... But it's like, which one would they consider to be optimal to go for? Like, that's the question, right? I, I, I think greens... I, I, greens are a pretty free mechanic once you get the hang of it. So, I, yeah. I mean, they're not, not too bad. The, be the beam... I think double beam also makes the last 10% a little bit hectic as well. Whereas I feel like greens in the last 10% are quite easy. And that's where the, a lot of the difficulty is concentrated. So, I feel like going for triple greens is still the way to go. Um, and not doing the, the thing. Uh, how do you manage when people in the, the same group got two greens? It's a priority system. Basically, the way it works is that you have a priority of who moves. So you have people with markers who never move. You have people who are priority one who always move unless the green is basically already solved. And then you have people who are priority two who only move if um, there's more than one green that spawns on that location and the other green is the person who has the marker, basically is uh, that's that's the tldr like i wrote down how it works i wrote down the rule set on on how to go about doing it um but that's that's basically it there's a priority system that's the deal it's not uh, it, the green is it's it sounds 
complicated, but it's really not because each individual person just needs to think about like what they need to be doing. It's um, it's not as bad as it sounds, to be honest. Like green is not that bad. When I saw you facing up against Suwon, we're doing Saros to tomorrow. Drowned. Are you guys breaking? You guys breaking to Saros? Look, you know, the title is still unclaimed. I'm not gonna lie, I will roast Anet a little bit for this. Um, they should have already nerfed Saros. I think they've kind of missed a trick here. Um, Saros is still way too hard for mid-core players. I think they really should have capitalized on this triple difficulty system um, and made it way more accessible for mid-core players. Gluttony should have already been mega, mega nerfed at this point so that it's an option for intermediate teams on the regular challenge mode to basically skip greens. Uh, uh, maybe even skip big AoEs, because that will also simplify the fight on um, challenge mode a lot. Uh, they already should have probably nerfed the HP more. I think it's still too high. They probably should have also nerfed the damage at 10%. I think teams are really going to struggle with that. Kind of intermediate, like mid-core teams are really going to struggle with that. Uh, it probably should get less stacks. And they should have fixed the fucking gluttony orb RNG as well, because fuck that, bro. Holy shit. Especially on the title, the RNG is like actual pain and suffering. Uh, it sucks. It, it's not nice. I don't like it. Yeah. I feed. Exactly. Good voice line. Embodiment of Turbo Draub. But yeah, I actually really hope they nerf it quite aggressively. Um, because I think they're, they're, they're kind of missing something here. It's too hard, um, to be honest. It is too difficult. Uh, and they should capitalize on that third difficulty setting, um, yeah, to make it more exciting for mid-core teams. Yeah. But that's just my opinion. What do I know? Where do we go? We went to Istan. Sharp Blade Sharp might exactly VPRs, right. Are you annoyed and didn't get set first? Yeah, of course. It's fucking dog shit. It's horrible. Um, it's the pretty much the worst possible outcome. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's kind of like... <laughs> sorry. I I think that question's funny because it's kind of like being like, Teapot, do you hate losing? Yeah. Like, does, does it suck to lose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does it's it feel bad losing, Teapot? <laughs> And you're like, yes. Yes, it does. That's how it is. But yeah, no, it was obviously, yeah. a, it was obviously a miserable failure, of course. Yeah, obviously. Of course, yes. But that's just how it goes sometimes. Can't win them all. Yeah, see, when NA first gets it, everybody freaks out because they're like, oh my gosh, like, NA actually did it. Like, they made a team. Like, they, they like, talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, Grim is right. Yeah, BNA. I mean, NA is still trying to get HTCM. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. NA Legendary Saris. NA Normal Mode. Does Americans talk to each other? No. They actually, they use telepathy. <laughs> uh, they got a bit lucky. I mean, luck is always involved, right? Like, you know, getting, getting the pull where nobody fucks up is part of, like, progression at the end of the day. Throw up on Euclid? Yeah, that's irrelevant, though. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, a lot of people are probably not going to like my view on this, guys, but that I, I have no interest in changing my opinion on this. I, I'm never going to change my mind. Can you be disappointed when you don't play Guild Wars so as seriously as you uh, did before? Uh, I mean, no, not not really. I mean, it's not. I mean, not quite as bad, but I wasn't really playing very seriously with HTCM either. But I wasn't really playing this seriously this time either. Yeah, of course. But I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't change my opinion, now. I'm sending you a video because it made me laugh. Okay. 
Yes. I have sent the video. Okay. What are you doing with it? Fuck is this? <laughs> That's unfortunate, yeah. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Walks yeah. in to rob the place, tries to pull out the gun, drops the gun behind the counter, can't jump the counter. Woman picks That's up tragic. the gun, he flees. <laughs> that is tragic, yeah. Yes. Wow, is Gilles to warm up? I mean, WoW is a harder game, so it, it is actually pretty good, I think. It doesn't... I think uh, it's advantageous to, to play WoW. The, the big problem with... Um, um, the, the big problem with Guild Wars 2, it's very difficult to... It's very difficult to make a team that will actually stay together because the game doesn't hold people, right? Okay? Um... And, and also, there's also another thing. You know, at the end of the day, if I wanted to get Worlds first, I could just join SC. Because if I do that, there will be no other team that will compete. That is the reality uh, of the situation. Um, but the thing is, I view that as pretty lame uh, and very uninteresting. But you're, I'm kind of in this like very weird hell situation, uh, to be honest, because... Most of the people I would play Guild Wars 2 with really don't want to play the game because the game doesn't really offer anything to the type of player that wants to kind of try hard, really. It's just not a good investment for players like that. So it's very difficult to actually try to make something competitive in this game in that regard. It's very unpredictable. It's, it's very difficult to actually make a team. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, you know, like, one of our players who was supposed to play with us was like, yeah, I really don't want to play this and just stop playing. He was like, yeah, I'm out. Unlucky. Very good. But it's fine. Um, like, there there are other things I can go for. Like, I mean, I mean, to be honest, like, hopefully I'll be able to do, like, the WoW Mythic Plus stuff and play WoW competitively. Playing Guild Wars 2 competitively is quite unrewarding. It's also very frustrating, to be honest. I'd be pretty happy if I qualify for TGP, actually. That would be a decent accomplishment. High teams are competing on Worlds first. Two. Ah. I think I still go launch day, go to Worlds first, or just do it on launch day. It depends where I'm at in my life. If I if I have if my WoW has advanced, then WoW will be a priority. Otherwise, it depends, right? Depends. Like, for example, if I had a choice in Guild Wars 2 Worlds first and playing the Great Push, um, the Great Push is, uh, I would value that far higher than Guild Wars 2 Worlds first, yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, it depends. I'll obviously play. If I've got nothing else going on, I'll definitely go for it, yeah. Indeed. Dude, this event kind of sucks. Feels bad. Oh yeah, this one is the non-collidable one. Why do you guys say into WoW so late in its cycle? I mean, new expansion. Get what's the race to Worlds first or, or WoW race to Worlds last? Well, I mean, you know, I guess that, uh, I guess that depends. Who's your favorite non-MMO streamer? Hmm. Ah! 
I, y ah, yes. I do like Trump SC a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, I like Trump too. Trump, Trump is fucking high tier. Trump is a giga chad. Yeah. I've learned many lessons from Trump SC, the streamer, not the former president. I like uh, I like Grubby. Grubby's one of my favorite streamers. Yeah. yeah. Warcraft three. I like uh, Hasim and Uthermal as well. It's good fucking content. Also a big fan of uh, Maximus Black. Yep. One of the OG streamers. Good. Do you like watching Artosis? Oh yeah, I love I freaking love Artosis. <laughs> You, you, the problem, okay, the weird thing about Artosis is if, if we just, like, took some random person and just, like, put them in front of a screen to watch Artosis, they would be so confused because, the, like, the text-to-speech is just so unhinged. Yeah. It's, and it's just It's, like, incest. The, the, ch the chat is it's out of control. Cancer. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hilarious. I also, I also really enjoy um, many of the people in the... Mario 64 community. I like Simply right now. I think yeah. Simply is really funny. Your time's out. I used to really like um, Preparian. Yeah. He's one of the first streamers that I really watched. He, he did do like WoW and stuff a little bit though. Yeah, and I think Diablo is alright. I think um, it was uh, some stuff he did. Yeah, Diablo is what I really watched him play. I don't watch them as much now though because I don't um I don't enjoy Hearthstone is like super cool back in the day but they they added some new game mode that just didn't quite I don't know just didn't capture I loved Arena like Arena was just fun to watch It was especially funny when you'd watch the streamer get like a terrible deck and they'd be like well we know this isn't going to work out well <laughs> Pay to win card game. Yeah, I I'm not really a card game fan, to be honest. Especially not online card games. My only interaction with I, Hearthstone I, was writing a bot for Hearthstone, because I wanted to see if I could. And it did. It got to, you know, it was like Molten Giant rank, guys. My bot was destroying people with Face Hunter. It was good. Yeah, I wasn't a um, huge fan. Uh, like, I, for me... I think hey, the, the money the investment in those games is too high. Yeah. I, I just couldn't justify it. And you can't, you know, like with trade, with an actual trading card game, you can, you know, you can, you can actually trade it, right? So, you can, you know, yeah, you can sell. Yeah. But you can't really do that with Hearthstone, right? You know, you're just, you know, you, you've just, no, not you at just, all. you've just swiped, right? Like, that's all that you've done, which is like, eh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Sacrifices must be made, Snub. Have you seen uh, three body problems, Snub? It's fucking ignoring me. It's over. It's over. Never mind. You should watch the show, chat. Wait, watch wait, the show. Wait, say it again. What did you say? I got distracted. Oh, okay. Happened? Have you seen the three body problem? Netflix. Three body problem? Yes. It's good, Snab. Oh. You got to watch it. It's a good show. Just saying. It's pretty good. Awaken, of the science and controversy behind this. Yeah, science American fiction. science fiction television series. It's got a four star. Yeah. I might have to watch this later, actually. Yeah, it is good. It's very good. What's the, what's the like, premise here? What's, what's going on? Um, I, I, I'm not going to say anything because it's, it's a little spoilerific because the show is, um, the show is, it doesn't tell you the premise immediately. It's kind of like a mystery at the start, so... I, oh, okay. Yeah. Then yeah, yeah say, nothing. You know, say nothing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, the the premise is not, 
I- immediate or rather like the you know the the you know what's actually I actually going think on. that's exciting then. Yeah. yeah, no, I'll watch it. Yeah. I'll watch it. Yeah, it uh you know it, it's it, you know you you go oh what's going on? I don't know. What's what's happening? I'm not sure. And then then you find out obviously. So <laughs> That seems like it would be good. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. It's very good, actually. Very nice show. All right. Well, I got to get out of here because I got to do a bunch of cleaning. I'm decluttering my house and mm. I got to keep setting up this room. I've half set it up now. Yeah. So I will leave, but good chat today. I will say one thing. The show, Yeah. It has. it does involve Judgment Day. Okay, that's not actually a spoiler in any way, actually, but I just find that funny that it, the, the the phrase "Judgment Day" is involved. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. Catch you later. Yep. See ya. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Judgment Day. The gruesome deaths of beloved characters. Well, I mean, it's made by the same people who did Game of Thrones, so I'm not sure if we can guarantee that, but again, I'm saying nothing. I'm not spoiling you guys. Maybe I should just spoil the show, guys. Uh, Sobgoal 600, I spoil the show for everyone on stream and just grief people. So we can make that happen, guys. Oh man. No, I will unsub and unfollow now. No. Smadge. Yeah. <laughs> Judgment Day has arrived. Very good. Wait, what is this video on the subreddit? Top 10 rocks in Guild Wars 2. When you are building a world, there are many things you need to take into consideration to make it seem like a real world that people would exist in. There are roads, cities, wells, trees, bridges, and so many other things that are integral to Top any 10 fantasy rocks. world. And one of those things is rocks. Hmm. Where in this video, I want to go over the 10 best rocks across the entirety Holy of Shivers 2. Now we can consider a lot of different things as rocks, where I'm not going to be talking about any mountains in this video, because we will save that for a future video. Also, I never really say this, but number one is really cool, so make sure you stick around. Okay. Let's get started. All right. In the number 10 spot are throwable rocks. These are the basic throwable rocks rock. that you can find in many different places around the world. And this is kind of a generic answer that I am just marking off on. What's the top right rock? Away. But now for the number one spot. Okay. For my favorite rock in the entire game. My favorite game, rock. It's got to go to the strange rock. Strange this rock. This is a super interesting item added in Living World Season 3, Episode 2, Rising Flames. Okay. Where you can find a strange rock across Ember Bay as a rare drop from different enemies or from salvage debris. Which you get from Scrit Stashes, which requires you to have a Scrit Worker Contract from the Task Merchant wow. at the Scrit Anchorage. That's crazy. And to summarize, this is just a rare drop. And it was actually a mystery when the map first came out, because nobody mm. knew what this item was for. Okay. Where the community came together to solve the mystery of this strange rock, and actually discovered something really cool. Mm. See, this is actually a part of a chain of events that you can do in order to unlock a special item. The first part is to get the strange rock. But you can then bring that rock to the lava at the top of Destruction's Maw to get a prompt that will let you turn that strange rock into a round lump. Wow. You can then bring that round lump to the lava inside of the furnace chamber and get a prompt that will let you turn the round lump into an encrusted ring. You Whoa. can then bring that encrusted ring to the lava near Titan's Perch to turn that encrusted ring into a suit covered ring. And then finally, suit you can covered. bring that suit covered ring to the lava below the sealed entrance to turn it into Rurik's engagement ring. Holy shit! Which this ring is an ascended ring that you can attune, infuse, and select stats for it. Where when it comes to the ascended item itself, this is a pretty expensive ring and there are cheaper options. However, it is a very special ring that might be fun to have equipped on your character for that reason. I just absolutely love this adventure that you go on where you have to go on and on Honestly, I can't disagree. To turn this strange rock pretty into cool. this awesome ascended ring. But I think it gets even better when you understand the story going on here. Mm. See, Prince Rurik is a very popular character from the original Guild Wars, where his father is Keen Adelborn, whose ghostly fight is in the Ascalonian Catacombs dungeon, mm. where Rurik was betrothed to Lady Althea, who is a powerful mesmer from Ascalon. 
but while they were engaged, they could never get married as Lady Unlucky. Althea died in the Syrian as a char laid siege to Ascalon. GG. Prince Rurik and his father Adelburn had a disagreement where Adelburn basically wanted to stay and wage war against the char compared to Rurik who wanted to take his people and flee to Crida. Yeah, the king that's and what prince we did. did their respective desires and Rurik took many soldiers and refugees across the Shiver Peaks and into Crida. However, Prince Rurik sacrificed his life in order to save his people as he held off That's the attacking true. Stone Summit Dwarves so his people could get away, eventually falling in battle to the leader of the Stone Summit, Dagnar Stonepaint. Whoa, look at that animation. Later, Prince Rurik was reanimated by the undead lich, Vizier Kilbron, who was the one who sunk ore beneath the oceans to prevent the Char from conquering it, and who seek to fulfill the flames yeah, of the Yeah, we're still in the rock video, guys. Taking the scepter of Or to summon the Titan army into Tyria. Okay. Where adventurers who were saved by Prince Rurik in the Shiver Peaks eventually came to the very gates yeah, of the Yeah, they had to do Undead Rurik, guys. Bitch, but was met by reanimated versions that is true. of their dear prince. We did have to do that. They had to strike him down in we battle. We did kill him, yeah. He's allowed Rurik so to be given peace, and his spirit traveled to the Hall of Heroes. But it is very likely, or proven now, that this undead reanimated version of Prince Rurik still had his engagement ring to Lady Althea on him as he was taken to the Ring of Fire, where sometime before or as he died, his ring was returned to the earth, where as centuries had passed, the ring was covered in layers of soot and rock and became well, a strange go. rock that we started our journey with here. A strange rock that is my favorite rock in favorite the Favorite rock in the game. game. Yeah, I think this guy does a lot and of stuff like this. That's why I'm subscribed. This guy does some fucking juice. He does like a million top 10 things. It's a little bit like what Crendor does, right? I think Crendor does some pretty similar stuff. Wait, top 10 world bosses. World boss. Let's see what he... Wait, okay, what's the best one? Yo, oh! He says Triple Troll's the best! That's actually big! Okay, he says... Wait... Wait, top 10 fire elemental? Are you kidding me, bro? This one's dog shit. Kaka Queen?! Bro. Dry... Dry... Uh, about that. Shat oh my god. Shadow Behemoth, bro. I mean, I guess it looks pretty cool. The Shatterer. Uh, this one kind of sucks, honestly. Jungle Worm? Dragar? Tequ I mean, Tequadal's pretty good. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this is, this is a little bit scuffed. I'm, I'm gonna... Wait, Particle? Oh yeah, of course. This is the... the yeah, the... Um, when they fucking killed it, right? Yeah. Triple Trouble Worm. I mean, Triple Trouble Worm is very high tier. This is one of the best world bosses in the game, but I'm not gonna lie. Jungle Worm, Shadow Behemoth, Shatterer, this is cursed. Right, where's Dragon's End? Where's Dragon's End, bro? What's going on? Top 10 rocks. Oh, wait, holy shit. Dude, he's playing vanilla. Let's go. Wait, HC? HC Hype? HC Hype? Oh, look, here we go. Wait, what server does he play on? Wait, he, dude, this guy's sick. He has like, wait, as we quest it, I want to continue talking about troll lore and also ask about Vol'jin for a little bit. I want to chat about something that's been on my mind recently. Bro, he does like the WoW lore too. Holy shit. Level 34, Orc Shaman, SOD hype. SOD hype. Is it SOD actually? It is, yeah. He's opted out of the PvP event. That's cursed. SOD hype. SOD hype. Well, let's see where he is in HC, actually. Uh, hardcore. HC hype. HC hype. Level 10. Respectable. Level 12. He faces level 8 goblin. Boom. Ah, yes. Arachia. Classic Tauren quest there, guys. Look at the size of that Kodo. He's got a pet chicken. Uh, how many times you hate to? It's not going to be hype, bro. You know what? Angels is just coping. He's He thinks that HC isn't hype because he knows he would die to like level six wolf or something. Right? Look, look at this. He died to level nine uh, flatland prowler. That's what's going to happen there. He wouldn't survive this shit. HC is hype. Look, let me show you some hype clips. I'll let, Let's... let's make this happen here. Hang on, let me uh, go ahead and get you something good. Here we go. There's some good clips. Let's take a look at Jester's channel.
Let's take a look at this. Take a look at the nulls. Let's take a look, chat. Jester pulls a single null. What, what do you have? It pulls every single null. Oh, two. That's bad. Mass nulls. Here Maybe we go, net. Oh, we are netted as well. That's fucking bad. That's really bad. Four nulls. So oh, that's that's gigabat. Heal, heal, heal. Net. We need to run away here. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, oh, dynamite. And there it is. No fucking way. <laughs> Dude, but the, <laughs> this is honestly so fucked up. This is actually so fucked. Like we. <laughs> oh, we pulled two. This That's this fast. cliff is honestly brutal, man. Like the fact that he pulls four netters and they just net him That's for out. thirty seconds or so is just so heal, insane. Heal, heal. This is vanilla wow, guys. Okay, this is vanilla wow. There's also the moonstalker. I think this is also a pretty good one. Oh yeah, now we gotta do that for him. I did. Oh, fuck's sake. Yeah. I guess you can't do that then. Oh, well. Yeah, that's me done then for tonight. I'll just restart uh, again. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> H Look, guys, HC is hype, okay? HC is fucking hype. Yeah. Wait, where's the actual good... Wait, let me see if I can find a really good hardcore death. Because some of these are so good. Oh, my God. Um, I think see if I can find this. There are some really good hardcore deaths, to be honest. That's, that's to be honest. This one? Wait, what do we got? What's this one? Wait, what the f what the fuck is this? <laughs> no, I need to mute it. I'm gonna get fucked on YouTube. Oh, never mind. Hang on. Wait, is that what is the dinosaur even doing here? Someone's like kited it from Ungoro. Here we go. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> 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 look, look at that. He kind of all the way to the like the next zone over just so this one happened. <laughs> oh man, that's fucking funny, holy shit. That, that, <laughs> well, I mean that you know that's unfortunate guys. That's unfortunate. What's he only got showing timers? Plus one plus two M plus is this called um uh M plus timer, it's a weak aura. It's a weak aura. Oh, dude, this one is fucking god tier. Look at this clip, boys. What? Check this shit out. Go behind him, Stas. He's level Sorry. 59, guys. He's fighting level 56 elite bear. Okay, look at this. Here we go. Take a look, chat. Oh, no. I, I mean, I'm pretty, kind of good, pretty low from this. I get him, I get him. Parry! Parry! Oh, what? What? <laughs> I think mean, that He's is fucked. very unfortunate. Go behind him, Stas? <laughs> he fucking Fuck. parried, man. The bear just parried him and killed him. Holy shit. Yeah. And that's it. He's back to level one. You know, the, the funny thing about this clip is, is man, dude. So, I mean, to be fair, this is one of the best hardcore players, actually. Like, speedrunning and stuff. Dude, I would never do it like this. Because because you're playing Druid, I would just, like, spam Moonfire on it and entangle it until it slowly died. He's got some serious balls to play it like this, to be honest. Uh, and actually try and 1v1 it directly. I would never fucking do that shit. Parry. Boom. 
And that's back to level one, guys. Back to level one. This guy has some very good, uh... Some very good deaths here, actually. It's pretty... There's some good ones. You know, there's definitely some good ones. <laughs> Tactics death. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny. A few more mobs in the thought, guys. Okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Take a look at this. We're fine, we're fine. Frost ward? Fuck, there's actually way more mobs. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Ha, <laughs> Blair! Oh, oh, I missed that! <laughs> he missed the plank. Please, please, I could die, I could die. What, what am I doing? What am He's I doing? Natted. What am I doing? He's natted! He's natted! They have net! They have net! I'm actually dead. I'm trolling, guys. <laughs> the net strikes again! There it is! You know, like, you know, like... <laughs> more mobs. Please, please, I could die, I could die. What, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What? They have net? They have net? I'm actually dead. I'm trolling, guys. <laughs> oh, man. It, honestly, stuff like that never gets old. Yeah. It never gets old, chat. It really doesn't. Alright, I'm raiding Lara. Lara's doing Saras. Guys, I'm back tomorrow. It's Saras time. It's... Wow time, it's keys, it's a variety of things. That's what we're doing. Uh, I'm back tomorrow though, so thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the stream. Follow if you liked it. Subscribe if you really liked it. Follow all my social media. Let's go, guys. Uh, buy the game with the referral link. Oh, oh yeah, we got, um, wait, tomorrow is, we got vanilla, right? J Jester, we're doing vanilla, right, I think? Bro, I need to get DMF, fuck. Uh... I gotta get the DMF. Oh, um, you know, I will not follow socials. Well, maybe you should, seeing as Scribe followed me. Okay, you're in good company. So get in there. Yo! Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? Good night, my friends. Thanks for watching. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Follow, subscribe, give me money. You know what to do. Boom. Uh, need to hit the raid button. Here we go. Boom. I'm pressing it. <laughs>